So a few weeks ago, Bally thought, I'd like to see Carl. And now Carl stood next to him. So let's say, first of thanks to Carl for coming, but also thanks to Bally for being a part of this. Cheers, Bastard. Courses, tried lots of different things, they didn't really work. Um, and then somebody introduced me to uh, Carl's work, and uh, he's on uh, this uh, radio show in America. So I thought, no, why not? Nothing else is working, why not try a different one more star? So, um, uh, so far, in one of the cases, uh, one of the cases I saw, um, uh, I had an injunction against me from one of the things that I learned from somebody else in the country. So I had two cases running. So, um, really, from the injunction, I had lots of different orders. So uh, halfway through, I was trying not to uh, contract the court or the opposite side, but then I, the orders, I had no choice. So I, I had the pressure of the time scale and uh, stuff that I didn't really want to do. So uh, I, I, I tried to find out from Carl's technique how that kind of works and what was the best thing to do. And um, I wrote it up. I thought well, there's no time like the president. Just rang up, got a bit of advice. But, but his very short sentences together, um, and you'll, you'll find what, uh, in a few moments what this is all about, but very short sentences, no controversy, and very short, concise sentences. The orders vanished, so I knew, hang on, that worked. So I rang up, like most of his other uh, <coughs> listeners do, saying, oh, that worked, I'm really shocked, I didn't expect it to work. Uh, and I got a bit more advice, and then I said to him, look, this, this, is, this is no good, I'm busy, you're busy. When, when, can, when can I get you on a plane ticket and get you over here? So he said, uh, I have a farm, so I've just got to wait for winter, for it to cl uh, close down a little bit, and then I'll come. So I asked him again in a couple of weeks' time, perfect time, and uh, a couple of weeks later, this is where he is. So uh, it kind of all fell together at the same time. I took him to a crown court as well, which uh, worked quite wonders as well, which we'll talk about in the techniques for that. <coughs> um, so there's lots of different things you can do. Um, I'm not going to take too much of your time, because like, that's unfair, you know, when you listen to him. You want to listen to this guy? Uh, so, uh, here we go. Wait, 
am I not your property? And she said, absolutely. I said, you, know, you folks don't understand the word property. And this is what the government's are really messing with you folks. Property just means what is exclusive to you to use and enjoy. Exclusive to all others within the society. Nobody has the right to tell you how you may use or enjoy your property. Do they have a vested interest in it? Make your claim. If you don't have a vested interest, like did you put anything into it, then you can't make a claim for it. So did anybody put, have any vested interest in that newborn? Did she accept welfare? Did we accept hospital pay? Did we accept any gifts from you folks? No. You know, we didn't help produce. You know, that was the fruit of our labor. That's our property. So that's our property. Because if you want to look at your argument, this one was on John Block. John Block basically said exactly what I said, but he said, like, whether it's incorporeal or corporeal property, like, like your dreams, your hopes, your intellectual property, what you design, that's your property. You can make an exclusive claim to it that you're the one who, for the fruits of your labor, should benefit from. Nobody else has the right to claim it. So I said to those women, you believe the state of Alabama has the right to claim my property? And this is the last look. He said, wow. Wow. They were going like, wow, I claim property. It was like two 180 degrees things hitting each other. Like, wow, where do people from? So I was like, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, they took us, um, uh, they said, if you don't sign the paperwork, you know, they said, if you don't sign this agreement with us, you'll never see your child again. I said, is that a threat? They said, we do this every day, Mr. Lance. I said, mm -hmm. you, you mess with the wrong guy. So, uh, we left the hospital and came running out of the elevator saying, you got to sign this, got to sign this, you know that? Have a nice day, ladies. You know, and the elevator left. I said, that child better be here. So the five in the morning, we'd come back to you. He was gone. So uh, we went through 30 hearings. And uh, the very last thing we were at was an order to show cause. And if anybody knows what an order to show cause means, it means, why are you here? So for 30 hearings, me and my wife, we got 17 attorneys. She got the eight, I got nine. <laughs> and nobody could ever find out why they took the charge. They would never be uh, like, a, like a charge of abuse and black anything. So it was great. We got to the very last hearing, and I had learned this stuff really, really well by then. And going to court so many times, it was fairly easy for me to move court. So um, I'll explain how we moved court in a little bit. But uh, what was a lot of fun is we finally had a judge who was out of the, uh, about 100 miles away, so we really had no skin in the game. When he sat on the bench, I set the rules of court, which was great. This is what happened because we were getting out. Nowhere. If you don't establish the rules of the court immediately, you're going to get rid of them. So I got lucky. Another judge was seated on the bench. He was the ninth judge. And I was dropping like flies. <laughs> and uh, I said to the judge, the very first thing I asked the judge is, when is this court open? He says, oh, I'm not from over here. I've been appointed by the old Bible Supreme Court to sit here. Now let me find out. Uh, bailiff, when is this court open? He said, 8.30 to 5. I said, Judge, what, what do you think? I'm, you know, I'm a clown. You think this is funny? When's well, court open? He said, 24-7. I said, 365. He said, yes. And then I looked at the prosecutor. I said, what is this uh, term of this court? Is it six months? And it was a year. He said, no, it's a year. I said, from when? From the time I followed, or by the time you sat? He said, by the time I was seated. Good. I said, it's going to be one year from the term from this day forward. It's going to be one year, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, this, we got the term down. I said, but when is court in session? He says, whenever you wish. Because it's my court. He knew it was my court. I'm the one who moved the paperwork. I'm the one who the claim. I'm in the case. This is my court. So he's like, whenever you wish. I said, and I looked at the prosecutor. So I said, I was the judge was over here. So if I wish to hold court at 3 07 a.m. on Tuesday, next Tuesday, what, the, what do you require to do? He says, oh, call, man. Let's be reasonable about this. I said, just answer the question, Ron. When? What is. What are you required to do? As soon as I'm summoned to appear, I have to appear. So it means like you have to get out of bed at 307 and start getting your butt down here. I go to the magistrate, or I go to the deputy, they wake up the magistrate, the magistrate's going to issue a summons to appear, 
They're going to pull you up. You've got to pee down here, right? He says, I'll call. Let's be reasonable about this. And I looked at the prosecutor and said, he's got to be here at 307 as well. Because it's my court. He said, yes, but let's be reasonable about this. I said, okay, Your Honor. What do you feel is reasonable? He said, can you give us two weeks? Because I live 100 miles away. I said, I'll do you one better. I'll give you four weeks. He said, what? I said, I live 600 miles away. i got to take care of farm. i got livestock to round up. I said, i got uh, friends and family that are going to have to take care of this farm from while I'm gone. I said, four weeks is fast for me. He says, oh, I see. I see. You're very reasonable. I said, I'm a very reasonable man. I love it. Just don't mess with me. I know that it was a court. This is my court. So I did that one time to some man in Indiana. And I was just on the phone until 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, we walked into the court, the building, and uh, he says, oh, you have a cell phone? You've got to leave it outside. Don't let cell phones in the building. I said, is that a public building? He said, yes. Am I public? He said, oh, yeah. He said, really? So whose building is that? I said, it's mine. It's my building. It's public. I said, watch this. I said, I bet the security guards at the end of this scanning bank will know exactly where I'm going with this. Without blinking an eye, I bet you they'll hit it right on the dime. So as soon as we went through, he says, the thing was, beep, beep, beep. He says, uh, you got a cell phone? Yep, you got one right here. He said, uh, he said, you got to take it outside. I said, where's the building manager? She's holding court all up there, upstairs all day today on the third floor. But now dropping out, beep. I said, where's the building's manager? She's holding court all day on the third floor. She's the head judge. She's the building's manager. Okay, what you folks call the steward. Okay? So the Queen of England's got a hundred castles, right? And there's a, the bombing of Britain that starts to commence. The only one that she's got to go to is, say, up in Nottingham somewhere. She said, oh, I got one in Nottingham that hasn't been bombed yet. We're going to hold court immediately. So all these castles have to be ready for the Queen to hold court instantly. So there's a steward or building manager waiting for the Queen to arrive to hold court. So as soon as she gets there, there's no cobwebs or uh, everything where it's supposed to be. That she hasn't been there in 60 years, but everything's there, ready for her. And that's why they keep these like court buildings, like her castles, ready to fire off at a minute's notice. Same thing with the public court buildings. These are your courthouses. So as soon as I walked in, I said, I called my two leading three done. There's two guys sitting at the end of the lane. This is going down some stairs. I said to the guy, did you understand what just happened? He said, no. That's the building's manager. They're just waiting for a man or a woman, the public, to appear. They're here to serve you. So if I wanted to, I said, I don't live here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But if I really want to make a case out of it, I can just go up there and talk to the building manager. I said, you, you realize I am, this is my building. Thank you for securing and protecting my building and making sure nobody does any dastardly deeds while I'm gone. But you do know this is my building, and I no longer have to require you to carry out your rules. I'm going to set the rules of court. You do know I'm here now, and this is my building, that my grandfather and your great grandfather said we built human beings who built this building. Not a legal society. There's not one chef in the legal society that laid one brick in that building. So my friend was like, oh wow. He said, uh, you're right, they are called building managers. They're building managers. That's all they are. Because that's the, everything I try to tell you folks all the time. Is no matter how far back in time you go, the only purpose of government is to secure and protect the property of man. So the first thing that you guys are getting wiped out of your brains is that I can't call him property, I can't call him property, can't call my kid property, can't call this property, I can't call him property. Because the only purpose of a government is to secure and protect property, period. I know so many women in the United States and Canada get their kids back, but I guess one of the court says, I demand the immediate return of reservation of property. Have you seen Exhibit A? Well, the one that used Exhibit A, B, C, and D. Don't give me any of the kids. It's none of their damn business. Just say, that's my property. Has anybody seen this? And it was great. I said, for one lady in Canada, she's on, uh, on my website, on my radio show. She said, uh, I said, can you point out the woman who took your kids? And she said, yes, great. Then that was a robbery. <laughs> <laughs> So they, they have their own little website going on. I think they're called Surrey Jurors now. But I told the wife, you better not be on this because I don't help you get back four kids that run a radio show. I said, you better be, be in bed at 9 o'clock. It's getting up to 6 in the morning to get four kids. So she's a good girl. She's a real good lady. Her name is Jessie. But what was funny is her husband, Jonathan Little, 
he did all this legalese guru nonsense. It was like six pages long. It was this nonsense they were putting into the court. And they said they were being laughed out of the building. But for the first time, they went up. They were thrown out of the building and said, don't come back. So then by the time she came around to my show, it was funny. It was just like on bed and said to somebody, so the first woman or first man told her, they want the restoration of the property, the child, I'll help them get it back. And just, you, know, you know, by the time we do the next show. <laughs> so it was pretty, uh, that was pretty gamey what I did. That was pretty insane. So some lady called me up and she said, well, she didn't tell me they had gun and drug charges on in Canada. That's not really, uh, it's like gun and drug charges here. Gun charges probably going to have to be here too. And they took all four kids. She was one of these folks that, uh, uh, you know, tree-hugging kind of thing. Like, uh, they won't inoculate the kids. So in a socialist state like Canada, that's pretty extreme to not go along with the community. So uh, I said to her, this is going to be rough. And it's funny, I sure to talk to her husband at first, and he just wouldn't stop with his Yahweh, uh, all this crazy, free land, Montana, free, free land, he wouldn't stop. I said, look, is that your property? Yeah, just two sentences, let's get the hell in and out of court. And, he, and I said, let's try this. And every time he sent me something, it was always four, five, six, ten, twenty pages. It was insane. I said, look, two sentences, three sentences, let's get done. Let's make a claim for the property and get home. So he wouldn't do it. I said, you got a wife? And he's like, yeah, let me talk to her. I said, you know, this is all your effing fault. Because you're dealing with a clown on the camera. And she said, yes. He said, good, I can work with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, she was, she was practical. I loved her, man. She was great. And uh, so I had her writing back and forth to me to try to minimize the paperwork. I said, look, you're going to have to perform when you go to court. Look, what I do is like a lifestyle. It's a belief. It's a religion. I said, and then you have to understand the theory of what I'm doing. So it just comes natural to me to just totally say, who are you to tell me you own what? You tell me, my dad? You created me? No. You know, my creator has authority over me. What? No. You're just an equal man to me. You, no. You don't pay the roof of my head. I don't know you anything. So what was funny about this lady, Jessie, is um, she was getting this stuff short and short and short and short and short. And thank God that it was getting down. But it was getting down to the wire. And I said to her, look, I'll write it for you. I said, look, it's going to be very simple. It's going to hide Jesse Hustonal, require a woman, require the immediate restoration of property. It's due to the ABC uh, My property has been robbed of me. I've been robbed of property. And uh, see the other thing she wrote was, uh, if the property isn't restored, I'm going to hold the person in possession liable for one dollar a second until the property is restored, until the restoration of the property occurs. So that equals to eighty thousand four hundred dollars a day. If you don't do the math, that's a lot. One dollar a second is up real quick. But it doesn't sound like you agree. <laughs> if you can do it in one second, hey, well the question is how is you my kid, you know? So that's pretty funny. So but underneath there I said, but I'll forgive those who trespass upon my property as I wish those to forgive me when I trespass upon them. So you give them a little call out. You give them a way out. So the judge would love it. <laughs> so it was funny. They uh, went to Queen's Bench in New Brunswick on a Thursday. And the court clerk went crazy trying to rearrange the paperwork, trying to rewrite it, da 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 And uh, they said, no, just let it ride the way it is. I said, they're going to try to change it on you. They're going to try to tell you that you're in Queen's Bench, not at Queen's Bench, because you're always at Queen's Bench, you're not in the Queen's Bench. It's like, you want to meet at that big rock, or you want to meet in that big rock? Because when you're in it, you're under the control of the jurisdiction of that rock. You're an element of that rock. But you just want to meet at the rock, and act as a man, independent of the rock. So, um, yeah, this is what's fun, is all these years, when I ran out of money, I actually had to go uh, study. So I actually wrote a law dictionary. So that's why I'm really good with words. Don't mess with me with words. I'll clean the clock. And uh, you try. <laughs> I love it. I mean, people try me. So um, anyway, <laughs> Jesse said that uh, the court clerk, when he got the head judge, the head judge invited him up to his chambers. And the head judge said, this is some interesting paperwork. Um, but why do you call your children property, didn't Lincoln free the slaves? And she's like, well, they're my property because they're exclusive for me to use, and nobody else within the society may enjoy them other than I or my husband. He said, 
and he made it. He's like, oh. She said he was like sucking lime and saying, oh, can we just change it to chillium? And she said, okay. She got back down to like three hours. No, like you guys, three hours, you're on the other side of the ocean. You know, three hours in Canada is like just going to the town for like a bag of crisps. So she tries three hours back home from the courthouse, and she said, oh, we're great. The court clerk went flying to the court clerk, the clerk of the court went to the court clerk, the court clerk went running to the head judge, the head judge, we kind of had to meet the head judge of Queen's Bench. And uh, he, he, we had a great conversation with him, and he gave us a blank, you know, he, he was a great guy. And uh, the only thing he had to change is the word copy of children. I said, and what do you know? He said, well, you know, we let him change it. I said, I said, look. I said, you're lucky I'm not sitting on the other 2,000 miles away from you. I said, you don't understand what he just did to you. You get your behind back up there and you put property back on and you let it ride the way I said, you want it. You've got to ride. She said, no. I said, ma'am, if you don't put property on that, I'm never going to talk to you again because it's going to fail. I said, I've like got a bet on you that I can get you back your kids. Don't screw this up. You may bore you if you ever want to see your kids back. Believe me, put the word property in. So she said, oh man, it's a three hour ride, da, 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 da. I said, hey, look, you don't want to see your kids, fine. You're going up for adoption on Monday, say goodbye bye. So she said, okay, fine. Oh, she was passed. So she got me, she went and did it, God bless her. So she said, on Monday, there was 20 affidavits in the case file of wrong, the doctors, the four doctors, we kid, got the items, uh, foster care providers, everybody had 20 affidavits about all the horrible things that she was doing. She asked me earlier in a week, she said, you want me to get a copy of the case file? She said, like six inches thick with all these affidavits. I said, no. Don't ever challenge their beliefs. Don't ever challenge their evidence. Don't ever challenge their facts. It's like, if I believe in God, fine. If you don't believe in God, fine. I'm not here to challenge your facts. I only know what I believe is true to me. If they believe that's true, God bless them. Let them prove it. So I don't ever dispute facts, I don't dispute evidence. My stuff is so quick and fast, it's scary. So what she did is, um, she said, no. She said to the, he said, don't. I said, well, what the six inches of evidence is going to do is going to make you, it's going to break your heart. It's, it's all misdirection. It's all some sort of uh, citations. It's all some sort of statutory code. It's all something that's supposed to make you guys scramble around and try to decipher their nonsense to try to answer this nonsense. Because when they got nothing on you, they're going to put them out in their evidence. If they knew, like you chop the kid's hand off, the piece of paper would be, she chopped the hand off. You know, you, you actually did something wrong, you actually did something wrong. But when they don't have anything, they make these mountains that these people try to decipher. So what was funny is, everybody went before us. She was the very last one to go. Her husband even said on the show, he was up there in the stand for an hour and a half, doing all this crazy free land, free man nonsense. He says he knows he really effed up. Now, he said, but at the time, he thought he was doing the right thing. And it's so funny. He said, so she took the stand, and, she, and they said, uh, what's your name? Da -da 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 -da. And she said, that woman robbed me of my property. I said, what? That woman robbed me of my property, and it's your duty as the government to secure and protect property. I would cry to me to return to my property. Has anybody seen Exhibit A, B, C, and D? And the judge said, well, uh, don't you want to work with us? Don't you want to go to crisis counseling? Don't you want anger manager? Don't you want to drug counseling? Don't you want alcohol anonymous? Don't you want, she said, don't you want to do what's in the best interest of your child? She says, no, I don't want anything from the government. I can provide for I don't want any benefit from the government. And he says, well, don't you want to know why they robbed your child? He said, why would I care why a man raped me? Why would I care why somebody robbed me? I just want my property to start. So, so funny, the judge went like, the court will be in recess. So they all went outside in the lobby. So at 5 o'clock, they were told, go home. The court's closed with that. So they said they came back the next morning, and the Crown came across the lobby, and they seen it come in. And it had one piece of paper. My, oh, so it's not my right stuff. It's like a 22 font. So it kind of fills up a little bit of the paper. And he said, who wrote this? It's like, like little four said, who wrote this? And she said, I did. And he said, no, you didn't write it. Are you a lawyer? And she said, no. Do you want to be a lawyer? The Crown said, no. I don't feel like I just want my property. I just want my, I want the property and I want to go home. So uh, I said, uh, she said on the radio, she says, uh, said, what did they say to you? They said, well, whoever wrote this was scared poopless. I said, what did they say? They said, we're scared shitless. Who wrote this? And she thank God she said some crazy guy in the States, man, who wrote this. She just said she wrote it, so yeah, or whatever. You wrote it. Well, when do you want your property restored? 
she said, I want to learn now. She said, well, they're all over the province, and uh, it's going to take a while to wrap them all up. She said, can we have them back by the end of the week to you? And she said, okay, that'll be fine. So she said, when she, she said, and she said, she said, but what about all that testimony from yesterday? She said, all 20 people removed the affidavits from the case file. Because once they, because then they're going to be an accomplice to a robbery. <laughs> Yeah, see, nobody calls me on my radio show, so that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> did, she, did, she, did she get paid after the dollar second? Did she do what? Get paid after the dollar second? No, because you'll forgive those who trespass that's upon your property as those only going to ride until you settle it quick. See, because that's what happened to a lady in New Mexico, a little uh, Mexican lady, crazy lady. If anybody can get taken away, it's a but anyway, it, okay, because her husband called me up and said, can you help me with this? You know, it's like not my kid, so I'm not sure if I want to uh, take a DNA test that would be bound to a three-year-old that's going to be probably taken into force of care until she's 18. As I said, tell me what's going on. And then he told me that his wife was in a pickup truck with her brother, and the three-year-old was in the back in the car seat. He hit his car, kept the baby fell out of the car seat. <laughs> And the, mom, and the mom said, hey, slow down, man, you don't go fast, you know, hit the park, baby die. And I was like, well, if you were so drunk, you would have put the baby in the right way. And then she said, I got drunk, and then she started beating my brother. So our brother was like, you know, pulled into the police department and said, hey, you know, my sister beat me up. Help me. <laughs> Before we go, you know, crash or something, get her out of my car. So then she starts beating up the police. And he said, oh, don't forget, her kid, take a kid with you. <laughs> nice brother. <laughs> so the kid went into foster care. So then obviously the mom had, you know, Domestic violence charges on her. She had uh, hitting police officers, all kinds of drunken public, all kinds of nonsense on her. And uh, made a very simple two sentence thing again. I demand the immediate restoration of property. And uh, I'm going to sue you for it. I'm going to require the compensation of the fair and just compensation of $1 a second, the very second that the child held in naked possession. So um, it was funny. The husband was on my show. He was on the show. It's, um, at um, TalkShoe.com and there's a 44 minute clip I think in September and the husband explains what happened in court. He says, I think the prosecutor really messed up. I said, oh, what makes you think so? He says, because they thought this two sentence thing was fine and cute. So the prosecutor said, oh, you want to see what that whole uh, line of strategy is? I, a woman, and then her name, require the main restoration of property. Have you seen these in the day? <laughs> If the property is not restored immediately, it's held in naked possession. I'm going to require one dollar for every second is being held in such in such in such a manner. And that was it. And uh, and she and the husband and the wife thought that they were mocking him because everybody on the barrister side, on the prosecutor side, was laughing. The judge wasn't laughing. So she took the stand, and the judge said, "Did you write this?" And she said, "Absolutely." He says, so, you require your property to be restored, but how about AA classes and you still got criminal charges of uh, fighting with the police and drunk in public? Uh, what, you know, you don't do an investment with your child, you don't want to do county classes, you know? She said, sir, I know your job is to secure and protect property. They got my property, secure and protect it, return my property. And if you looked over at the prosecutor, he said, return the property. And he said, but you're on, you're on. He said, you know the law, restore the property. And the three-year-old ran all of But the husband didn't tell me that. He said, and serenity was restored. So the sentence was restored. I said, I don't care about peace, tranquility, serenity. What happened to the kid? Because not have a kid. <laughs> so for the last 15 minutes, you can't be arguing with the dad. Tell us what happened to the kid. You know, it's a, it's a, serenity was restored. I said, what? What? I said, what? I said, oh, not Betty or Sue or Jackie. Oh, you need to get kids serenity or public names. Oh, you crazy people. I said, so you got the kid back, right? I said, yeah, oh, happy ending. I said, oh, Rick's cool, you know. <laughs> you know I realized I was goofing around for 15 minutes, just not understanding that there's an adjective, you know. I'm like, what? You got the kid, what? So I was like, oh, I'm fine with this. You know, so, um, so like I said, this works out really quick and very easy. I guess I'll even, you know, tell you what I did for him in court with two sentences. It was extremely simple. Uh, all it was was his name, that he was a man, and that he required of you to place your case before Queen's Bench. And then the second sentence was, once we get the Queen's Bench, the plaintiff must press the record. That's it. Press the record. Okay, like Elvis 
Presley, okay? Right. Like when you put stuff in, when you put stuff in these these nonsense cloth oven clean smash, they're fine. There's never a recording of it. Recording is Viva Voce. So if you wrote you wrote the best song in the world, you're never gonna get a Grammy Award just because you wrote the best song. Elvis or Madonna or somebody that John Bill Jackson's gonna have to utter it, produce it with vocal cords, they're gonna produce the record. Nobody ever stands in open court and creates a record anymore. Everything's just fine. No man ever takes a bench on their side to utter that it's true. They never take a piece of paper and say, everything I verify, everything on this piece of paper is true, and let me press the record. This is what's true. This is what this man done wrong. Nobody stands in court and presses the record. You only press the record with the voice of man. But like I said, as most of you folks know, like a judge or a preacher or the bottle or this does not have vocal cords. The judge is not a man. Oh, we'll do this slideshow. He said, this 
fourth Texas Ranger pulled him over when he was all jacked up on the call. He said, oh, so jacked up on you call? I couldn't wait to get stopped. I said, I think you stopped on purpose. I think you put speed on purpose. No, no, man, I wasn't there. Yeah, you all know you did. So anyway, he got pulled over by a Texas Ranger in his van, his work van. And he just, he does satellite installs. He put one up in my house and he came over the eggs and I got Skype. But, uh, <laughs> when he got pulled over, the police, the ranger said to him, license registration. He says, is that an order? The police officer said, absolutely. License registration. He said, then the police officer, the ranger said, step out of the van. He says, is that an order? He says, absolutely. He stepped out of the van. He says, step to the back of the van. I'm going to search your vehicle. He says, is that an order? He says, absolutely. He said, put your hands on my car. And he said, he couldn't help. He started laughing. He's like, oh my God, this is exactly what Paul said you were going to do. He said, call who? He says, this guy on the radio. He says, this is exactly what he said you were going to do to me. He says, why? You're going to give me orders. He's like, right? He said, because you're just doing your job, right, Mr. Ranger? Nothing personal. This is, I'm just doing my duty, you know, and, you know, I'm just doing what I got to do. And he said, so he said, yeah, I'm just doing my duty, I'm just doing my job, right? He said, so you were ordered in this squad car to patrol this precinct tonight, right? Yeah. And then the shift commander gave you this call. You were ordered by him. And then he was ordered by the captain, who was ordered by the commissioner. And at the end of the week, you guys are all going to fill out some sort of, like, invoice. And you're going to require a fair just compensation for carrying out the orders. So guess what I'm going to do when we're done with this little get-together on the side of the highway? I'm going to create an invoice, and you're going to compensate me for carrying out your orders. So the policeman just said, the, the ranger just said, he came back to the paper and said, you're making me nervous. Get out of here. And I said, and what did you do next? He said, I got out. He said, oh, damn. You were supposed to say that in order for me to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and he would have just took the papers and went just, I don't want to know. Come out. Do whatever you want, man. You know, so what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying, my uncle was a New York City cop back in the 70s. Real bad time to be a New York City cop. And he broke every traffic violation in the book. He drove just like me. Good, good uncle. <laughs> and uh, he refused to do court. He wouldn't do it. His name is Gary Puma. He refused to do court. He wouldn't do it. So I said, if you don't get your court up, you will, we're going to ship it to the worst section of New York City. He said, do it. He said, what? He said, he said do it. He said, really? Yeah, do it. He said, okay, we'll make a deal with you. If you execute one year's of felony warrants, for criminal warrants, and you survive, We'll let you run a desk for the rest of your career as an NYPD officer. You got it. So for one year, he was up in the Bronx, kicking in doors, dragging out the felons, because he would not do quotas. So I'm telling you, these cops don't want to do quotas. They just want to do catch bad guys. So if we could start turning in these invoices to their superiors, their superiors will say, stop giving out tickets. Stop boring people. Stop doing quotas. So the cops are going to love us. When I met the U.S. Marshals and I let them on this show, they love me. They're like, oh my God, we're kicking little ladies out of these small foreclosures. Oh my God, if you could teach these people, we don't want to kick little ladies out because we live in a nice Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, and they have to kick out nice little ladies in the mountains, which they live there their whole lives. So like, we, we hate doing that job, but how are we going to get around the call? I said, I got a trick. <laughs> we're going to play on the people who give us orders. I said, we're going to demand fan just compensation. So I explained it to them about two hours at the U.S. Marshal's office in Rome, Virginia. And they were like, oh, well, I'm on the radio show. I explained, on oh, somebody else's show, I explained. I said, oh, man. They said, wow, how to go to the U.S. Marshal's today? And I explained everything that happened. So I had a lot of good, you know, those are good guys. And they said, look, this is the courts that are going to come after you, Carl. You didn't realize this. He said, that's who sent us to come and talk to the first place. But we couldn't find you in the mountains, so you had to come out. I said, yeah, my sister didn't appreciate you coming into her classroom three days in a row saying, where's your brother? In front of the kids, that's not that's not nice. He said, well, we got you out of the mountains, didn't we? Yeah, but still, that's not nice. And they said, well, the courts were scared of you. You put like a four-page lawsuit in there. I said, what are you doing? I said, basically, I'm calling the charter of the state of Alabama. I said, how? I said, it's in your book, the U.S. Courts book, it's in the state's constitution and the United States constitution. I'm calling that charter. He said, how'd you do it? And I showed it to him on four cents. He said, oh my God, that's genius. I said, yeah, it's your work. It's your work. I said, this is going to be fun. So he was like, he was like, oh, you go get him, Tiger. I'm like, go get him. Go, you know, we're behind you. And if anybody from the courts ever say, oh, damn, mess with you, we got your back. We're going to write such nice things to the judges and the magistrates that they're going to never, ever say anything bad about you because we're not going to believe it. We see 
exactly what they did because it was funny. Before I put that little four sentence lawsuit in, that was in November. Me and my sister went there like like September and October, and we went to the U.S. Marshals, who were the office underneath the court, that's the court clerks. And we tried to present it to the U.S. Marshals legal division because they said, you really need to read this little lawsuit I'm playing. Why? Because you really need to understand what I'm doing because when they understand what I'm doing, they're going to have you come find me. <laughs> and so they looked at it, it's like it looked like Fred Flintstone wrote. It's like, I require a trespass. What? 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 This is silly. What? Just file it upstairs with everybody else. So, so much fun when they called me. And uh, I said, Do you remember who I am? When I went down, he said, I remember you and your sister here like a month ago. I said, Yeah. And he just laughed at us. He said, Yeah, well, that's a cute lawsuit. Get, get out of here. He said, Yeah, well, now they want you to explain what the hell does this mean? I said, Oh, you want to say I was going to explain it? You got some time? And I actually had a proof of how the U.S. Code book. It was like all state courts are common law courts. I was like, Okay, I guess I'm going to U.S. Courts that built a book, right? All state courts are common law courts. And they said, Okay. What's common law court? A common law court only, only, only a court, a court of all, all, all state courts are common law courts. I said, okay, common law courts, only common law courts move on a court of record. What's a court of record? The magistrate is independent of the tribunal. So in the United States, we have courtrooms in Virginia. The magistrate and the federal court sits behind us, and a plaintiff and a defendant sits side by side, and we talk to the jury. All the magistrates sit all the way off the left. He just stays out of the view of the tribunal. So this is what we use with Bali's case. We use the Blackstone's Commentary Volume 3, Section 378 of Trial by Jury. The jury had its own hats and in peril to get the judge's duty of determining not only the facts, but getting the judge with the ball. So Bali will tell you that, that worked great on Monday. <laughs> and, uh, but like I said, uh, all I'm trying to do, like I said, explain to the U.S. Marshals, is that this is a court of record. It's all going to be turned by a trial by jury. The magistrates and judges, U.S. courts, the title, we're not going to be in the United States District Court, we're going to be at the United States District Court, so we don't have to be bound by the rules of the United States District Court. We're just going to be at the building that everybody knows in town as the United States District Court. But when we get there, we're going to be in a court of record. We're going to be in a court of record when I work for Valley and his family. So um, what I should do, I'm going to let Bali explain what happened on Monday, because that's a pretty good uh, lead up to it. So go ahead, Bali, tell him uh, what happened in uh, Monday. Good evening, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. Are you in? Um, yeah, so I was at the, the Crown, uh, Crown Court, and... Um, Carl's nice is put those couple of sentences together. We handed it into the court. Uh, typically, not on time. It's something I seem to always do. Hey, I'll live with that. Uh, that upset them for, for starters. So uh, we've got there to court, expecting the usual kind of battle. And uh, the first thing that my dad did, they got my dad to stand in the dock. And it was one of those lovely ones with the glass that makes it look like there's a criminal case and he got murdered. And it's all about a, a caravan, by the way. Um, so the first thing they did, they said to my dad, um, what's your name? And uh, my dad looked at me and thought, oh, yeah, something about name. What was I supposed to say about name? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Carl and he goes, I'm a man. <laughs> Judge looked at him, sorry, I'm a man. Pause. And then he said, okay, that's fine, sit down. You can't, we can't, uh, you can't talk here. Said, and he said, uh, We're just going to carry on. And I thought, Oh my god, but we're going to have this same rubbish again where we can't talk, you carry on talking. Oh, this is really good. And uh, he told me to sit down as well. So, so I, was, wait, I was trying to pass notes, and like, The judge is spot on. You're winning, you're winning. I was trying to hand him notes, like, Don't stop, you're winning. The judge knows the rules, stop. But I'm just used to being shafted. So. Yeah, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Default setting. <laughs> yeah, not great. So, uh, anyway, oh, okay, fine, maybe I'll sit down. And then basically what happened after that was just amazing. The judge turned around to the barrister, bearing in mind everyone 50 grand barrister, whatever the hell he gets, I don't really care. And he just turned around and he was just my best friend. After all the eight times I've been before, 
absolute shabby treatment. This time, it totally turned the other way around. And he fired questions to the barrister. And then I started to twig what was going on. They couldn't hear my dad or any of us because we're all man. And they're in the two dimension. In person. They're, they're in person. They're two ghosts having a conversation. Obviously, you can't. We're 3D. You can't talk in 2D. <laughs> yeah. It's a bizarre concept, but that's all, that exactly is what was happening, which Carl explained afterwards, after I was game. <laughs> um, and what happened was the judge turned around to him, uh, the barrister, and said, uh, Did uh, somebody get raped in... Oh, did you get the notice? Oh, first of all, yeah. Sorry, I've been through this. Did you get the notice? So uh, the judge said, uh, What notice? Yeah. So I thought, oh, God, here we go. The judge pretty much denied that he had had the notice, which didn't quite know what the game plan was that. The barrister said, oh yeah, this silly little notice. And I thought, okay, where are we going? And then they basically had a conversation about what was in the notice. So I'm just a bystander listening to all this. And said, what did he say in the notice? And said, um, not that. Not that. <laughs> uh, said, um, what was the first point that was on there? It was the, uh, the, the witnesses. The witnesses. Who was his witnesses? Did he see any witnesses? Why they, people? Why has it been held on the uh, it was the... the, the the, the next date was due for the 31st of March. And he was saying, well, has somebody been raped in this caravan? He went, no. Has somebody been murdered in this caravan? And there was a long delay. Uh, uh, no. He said, well, well, that's unusual. Why have you delayed it to the 31st of March for the trial? Uh, because your colleagues saw fit for it to be 31st of March. But back on this side, I knew exactly why. Because each day, the, the, uh, the ultimate fine is accruing every day. So by delaying it a little bit longer, if you're adding another 10 grand or whatever it is, you'll get half a day. 200 pounds a day, once again. So, um, but anyway, the judge, <coughs> I'm just bystander here, I'm just watching what's going on, thinking, where's this going? He turned around and just had a go at him and said, this is unacceptable. This is absolute joke. He turned around to the other and stuff and said, when's the next day? And said, it's the, the first week of January. So he said, right, change it to the first week of January. And uh, he turned around to the barrister and said, uh, about these witnesses, uh, and he said, oh, 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 you know, my witnesses may not be able to appear on the first week of January. They said, I don't care about your witnesses, what about his witnesses? He said, uh, well, he, did, he didn't even ask for any witnesses. And the, reason, the reason why the witnesses were so important is because the judge informed the barrister, you do know you're going to Queen's bench. You do know this, don't you? No more nonsense here in the two-dimensional courts. You do realize we're going to Queen's Bench. And it's amazing how almost nobody here knows what Queen's Bench is. And it's the people's court. And only man can appear. Everybody's stripped. Everybody stands naked before the Queen. There's no badges. So you've got to prove you did wrong and harm. You've been harmed or injured. Or else you found a false claim. You're going to. Whatever you wished on him, 200 pounds a day, is going to, he could exact back on them. So it's like, oh, you better move this up quick because these cars don't win. And so. the judge pretty much said, he said, you do realize what these guys are doing? And he said, uh, uh, and just started looking at the floor at this point. And he said, uh, your three witnesses are not going to be allowable in the next court, the Queen's Bench. They're going to be classed as hearsay. And he just went, uh, uh, he said, I'll get in. Uh, he said, I'll get in. <laughs> That's kind of, what's no, he talking okay. about? Um, but the judge clearly told him that this is not going to be acceptable. None of these uh, in the admin courts is fine for an enforcement officer or two coppers to at attack an ordinary man. But in the uh, Queen's bench, that, that's not going to work. But they could attack a person. A person. A man is protected by these glass. glass. I've seen a glass. We don't know why. You guys are protected in the third world. That's great. <laughs> They're protecting you guys. So, sorry, what's it? It's second dimension, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So, PayPal or Strawman, Stur 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 whatever you want to call it. Bridget. You know, all that kind of nonsense. Bridget codes. They're, they're all not like fictitious, aren't they? We're, they're not fluid. They're fluid. fictitious. The third dimension is fluid and dynamic. Second dimension is statute, and it's rigid. And it's black and white. And it is what it is. It's not living. Right, it's not living. It can't think, it can't speak, it has no voice on Queen's Bench. It has to be supported by a man. All this paperwork has to be supported if you approach it before a queen. And that's what the judge was trying to explain to the barrister. You do realize 
you do realize you have no case in Queens Bench. Because having Queens Bench, it has to be your wrong. And you folks don't realize wrong is the worst word in the English vocabulary. Because wrong means that you knew what the correct thing was to do, but with deliberate, malicious, and willful intent, you decided to cause harm and injury to another man, all lying. So when you say to somebody in that court, you did wrong, the judge was poop a peck, because that's the worst word you can say, wrong. That's the worst word you can say. And that judge Gregory? Yeah, judge Gregory. He's the best damn judge I've seen in this country, man. I want to write him a thank you, and I said, that was magnificent. Oh, I'm telling you. He's my best friend. Unbelievable. Uh, 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 the judge is doing great. So uh, basically, he, he said, uh, uh, I, he said to the barrister and said, I suspect, and I know, you need to talk to these guys on the way out. Um, you know, I think you're going to have a tough time in the next call. So the barrister's still looking at the floor. Uh, and uh, just as the, then, um, it was all kind of winding down. You know, we've got the dates, okay, dot the dimes, but you know, we're almost pretty much finished. And I thought, well, oh, it's my time. Yeah, yeah. That was that. Oh, I'm not going to answer. I'm not a huggy person. I don't want to hug things. So I started having a go at the judge. Yeah, he started with the judge. And uh, they, all, they all started to go after the judge. His dad, his brother, said, Oh my God, you want to speak you guys, don't shut up. Because <laughs> as soon as you novate, I don't know if anybody knows what novation is. Does everybody know what novation is? It's Okay. Uh, so say, say I put all this, say I put two sentences in there for, for, the, for, the, for their family. They do not appear in person because a person is a man within a society that holds a certain, certain office and a duty to perform a certain function within that society. So if he doesn't want to be part of the legal society, he won't appear in person. Not in their society, but I'll appear in person for the Queen. I hold his duty and allegiance and authority to the Queen because the Queen is actually the accumulation of the people. She actually represents the people. So yes, do I have a duty to my fellow man? Absolutely. That's what we'll talk about this before the Queen. So what happened is these folks started to blow their gaskets again because they were realizing that they were not being heard. Thank God the judge didn't allow them to be heard because of the two sentences I put in order to form the bin. And like, oh, a novation means if you have a piece of paper before the court and you start speaking and you say anything, anything other than what's exactly expressly written, expressly not applied, expressly what's on the paper, and you try to imply what you think that word means, you try to define it for them, you're creating a whole new contract. So whatever you put before the court, all those 10,000 documents you put in, the moment that they recognize you and allow you to speak in person, everything you put before the court goes in the dustbin, and I will create a brand new contract. So you wasted your time, you wasted my time, and I was going to say, oh, no, no, no. You're not flying me over here to make me look stupid. I said, that's it. So I grabbed his dad, I took him out of the court, I'm like, oh, bailiff, I got this. And I said, it was his dad, and I grabbed his brother, who was his brother? I grabbed his brother, I said, get out of here. And I grabbed Bobby, and I was pushing Bobby back, because I looked at the parasite, and I looked at the magistrate, and I said, you are not in their case, this is their case. We are going to present our case and define them in our case before Queen's Bench. Get out of here. You're a guest here. He said, you're a guest. And most people don't know guest in Greek means a hostile stranger. And to be very wary of, guest is not a nice word. And the judge said, you're a guest here. And you know, like, act accordingly, you got to run. Because you're a hostile enemy, you're a Greek that popped out of a Trojan horse. So you're not welcome. And you're dangerous. So you better get out of here. So. Thank God he got him out of there. <laughs> now we sat in the hallway and we waited. And then the barrister, he said, that's the barrister. And he came to court plenty of times with other people. He said, but nobody ever did what I did. I chomped up. And I said, hey, barrister, hey, maybe you don't realize what we're doing here. Do you realize we're not in person in your society? Do you realize we're just a man that acts, you know, with other men? Like, and we're going to meet the Queen's Bench. Do you understand the dynamics of what we're doing here? Do you understand where this is going? Do you realize you have no case? And if you make us create a case, do you realize we're going to hold you liable as a man, making a false claim, making a false case against these, this man? And he's like, I don't feel comfortable talking to anybody <laughs> other than the, 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 play, the defendant at this time. Because it's a very simple rule. Everybody, uh, what's the easiest way to find it? 
Habeas Corpus Act of 1679. It's either Rule 2 or Rule 5. That's the only two I ever use all the time. The plaintiff must appear. So anybody who's moved, oh, I love them. The United States have so much fun with people tax court. I get them in in two seconds. And I even got invited to do a national convention for public defenders, a uh, uh, federal prosecutors convention this year. It's fun. Because they wanted to know, what do we do when we see your paperwork come before our desk? I said, run like hell. Just throw, it in, throw your keys in the dustbin and, and run like hell. You, and make it unanswerable. Because the plaintiff must appear. So, the Habeas Corpus Act is a very simple, simple act. And every single one of you free men get it effing wrong. So bad, it's scary. You think it's a get out of jail free card. It's not. That's not, not even close. I think the legal society puts these little <coughs> mis misnomers in there. And so, they just misdirection all the time. It's ridiculous. If you read it, it's very simple. I say there was a, uh, say, uh, a duke or Earl, whatever you guys got going on here a couple hundred years ago, uh, after 1215, you know, whatever you had going on, other than the king of the coin. And somehow you... have got a lord here. What's that? a lord here. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. There you go. So there you go. We got a lord here. So say you trespass upon the lord's tenement. And say you trespass upon his lands that he's got control of. And you trespass upon his lands, and you steal an apple, you kill a deer. Well, he can say, you know what, that's 20 years of hard labor, and you start, you know, you start going to work. So you get word out, or your kinfolk find out that this lord is holding you. And you can say, wait a second, as a man of the, you know, uh, subject to the king or the queen, I have the right to have a trial of jury by my peers. So even though I'm being held, habeas corpus means that this lord has to turn over, like say, I trespassed upon his land, I require of this Lord to take my body and drag before a king's bench or queen's bench. Okay? That means I have the right to a trial by jury. So the jury of my peers, okay, my peers, will say, this was the custom of our people, that we just wander across the land and we pick apples at will, or we kill deer at will. We didn't know that we were doing wrong. The big word. So the peers would sit there and say, no, that's the customs of a guy like Carl who comes from the States, this is what he does. And the Lord said, well, you can't do that here. So they would realize that I had no willful, malicious intent to cause you harm, injury, or lie to you, breach a contract with you. I had no idea what your customs were. That's called common law. Customs are in a hierarchy of law. In this, any common law land, customs reign supreme. The statutes are so far down, it's scary. If this, my stuff, I'm telling you, will not work in France. Will not work under any Napoleonic code. Any place that's got a code for it, it will not work. So that's where they're going to get this one world order in. So no matter what you do in France or what, Uganda or Bangladesh, it's going to be the same crime universally. They want to be Star Trek kind of clowns. So they want to be one galactical federation of planet. You know, everybody's going to be treated equal. So everybody's customs are going to be squashed until you conform. So this is what I say to people. Some people get upset with me. I say, look, you folks, you got the Jamaican connection. Work with your people. You got the Eskimo people. You work with your people. Like, what? Because you know your customs, practices, policies, and beliefs better than anybody. I can't come to the Jamaican culture and say it's okay to smoke conch and be a 10 year old. Well, that's when we get in touch with great great grandma. To me, I think that's insane. So, but it's not for me to judge. Is this your belief? Is this your religion? Is this your practice? Is this your policy? God bless you. It's been working for you, obviously, you 10,000 generations on planet Earth. You don't need my help. Do whatever works for you guys. You know. <laughs> That's just my belief. So common law is basically the customs of the people, what works with those people. It's not a code because my beliefs and my codes are not going to work for the Eskimos. Like I said, the Eskimos need a 50 cow, you know, a 50, like a half inch bullet to make their kids go to school to get past the polar bears. Now, obviously, you don't need a 50 cow to go into New York City school to get past, you know, uh, a sewer. And so it's ridiculous. So you can't make a federal law that says that there can't be no guns on the side of a 50 cow or 22 cow. Because it doesn't work for the Eskimos. As soon as they step out of the house, they're going to get the pole with the 22 and the pole they're going to eat it for lunch. It's not going to work. But they're going to try to make this universal code that they'll be got a 22 or bigger. Well, what about the poor Eskimos? They're going to be eating for lunch if they actually try to comply and submit to the code. So you have to get the, you know, there's a balancing act between code and common law and common sense. It, it, there's got to be a, a balance there, and they're just trying to tip the scales that you folks don't even know what common law is. And I can't believe when I 
explain to you folks what the Book of Dome was, or what you guys call Doomsday Book of 1081. You guys have no history, no clue of your history. I'm not teaching you guys. You guys don't know what the Queen's bench is. And I have to teach the Canadians this. I said, do you understand this? What a lovely benefit you have? You folks, do, do, does anybody in this court even know where you submit a Don't tell me because you just found out today. <laughs> <laughs> does anybody know in this room where you file the first piece of paperwork in Queen's bench to have a claim heard in Queen's bench? Unbelievable. That's so I just want to remember that. No, no, where? 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 No. Okay. And it starts with an S. <coughs> no, you're no, you wrong. So. What? So. Where is it? So. What? So. Okay, explain how it works. He just found out today. So. <laughs> how it works. So, so, so basically, you, you have to fill out the application. No, you don't have to fill out the application. Well, that's you what they want you to. Right. So you, want to create, you want to be the creator. At all times, you want to do, when you file a claim, you want like this. No machine language, no, you want this. The written word of man. Now, if you are a chicken scratch, like I do, obviously you want to look for machine language, one behind us, and the guy can read it. But obviously you want to make your claim in the form of the hand of man. Okay? So when you make your, submit your claim, you want to look in the form of man. Oh, let me finish off. Sorry about that Lord guy. I forgot about the Hades Corpus thing going on. What happens is when you have a trial by the jury, the plaintiff must appear. Because I have a right, even though I'm some lowly guy from the United States, and he's some big lord here in England, that um, I still have the right to cross into my accuser. So this is how I kick the butt out of the United States. Well, out of the tax people in the United States. It's a lot of fun. Because everybody who gets their uh, criminal indictment or criminal complaint says United States of America versus John Doe or Bob Smith. So I always go to Bob Smith, and I always meet the federal people and say, oh, good. We have the right to cross-examine our accusers. That's the plaintiff. So, the United States of America, when will they appear? Because I have the right to cross-examine my accusers before a trial by jury. Is that not correct? Yes. Well, when will the United States of America appear? Because I always wanted to wore a skirt or slacks or jeans. <laughs> I always wanted to meet this United States of America. I've always been curious. And so if you can produce the United States of America, and I'll fly back here to Indiana, to witness this, because, oh boy, that's going to be your first. And they're like, yeah, well, we see where you're going with this. It's like, yeah, so do you still believe that your plaintiff has a case? And they're like, uh, you want to do a speaking tour national committee? No, 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 I got this covered. They said, what should we do when we ever run into your paperwork? I said, it's unanswerable, isn't it? One sentence, two sentences, I'm done. The plaintiff must appear. It goes back to Deuteronomy, it goes back to... Uh, had a Robbie, it goes back to Syria, it goes back to everybody. Everybody has this common belief that if somebody's claimed that somebody's done the wrong, I don't care if it goes back to caveman time. Did you steal my bomb? No. Okay, do I get the right to confront my accuser before I get killed? Yes, let's do this. It's a very, very ancient rule. It's common law. It's on Britain. It's the custom policy and practice and beliefs of it, like an indigenous people. It's common law. Common law is not Britain. This English common law is some sort of Legalese nonsense, well, troll of our actions, but that's written. Common law is what everybody knows, like, thank God my dad was German, and he did not know how to read, read, read write English. So I got very good, simple, practical skills from a man who was, you'd say he's illiterate, but he was incredibly wise. And my mom worked for the IRS for over 20 years, so I got very lucky with her that she helped prepare criminal cases and she was a tax lawyer for 20 years, so she told me that it's all fraud. My mom said to me, yeah, it's great. And my mom said, this is a fun one. So. I finally heard this a hundred times. And hang on, I think uh, being told there's a, a break coming up for a second. We'll hold that one for a second. All right. Just for that quick uh, finish off of the uh, right. the Salford. So if you go to go Oh, the yeah, yeah, Salford one. Let me fill out the, the, the application form when I rang them up, they want you to fill out the form. So it goes back to what Cole always says about... Uh, filling out your own forms and if you create the document yourself, you know, that's always beneficial. Um, but basically, uh, fill out the, the similar sort of thing, it goes up to Salford and Salford will assign a court local to you and that becomes Queen Bench. So, court so, being... So you, all your local courthouses have the capacity to give matters before the Queen. You can hold it under an oak tree, you can hold it under an apple tree, you can hold it any place you wish to hold the Queen's bench, any place that the jury is. It's not the court in. building. It's not a court building. It's not the court building. So it's here right from where it's now. So it's like, this is the Queen's bench. I hear this all the time. It's the Queen's bench. But when, I do that, when I do that in court, when I, some people in the United States I help, I'll, I'll explain how I help this one guy. We flip the court around in three sentences, and the judge said to the little guy, well, the problem.
prosecutor just got this important document from you, and he requires a stay of the court for 30 days. Do you want you to grant them a 30-day stay? He's like, why? He says, because we would, I would like to know, would you like to prosecute the prosecutor? He just flipped the court from the statute of administrative court to the common law court. He's like, nah, Your Honor, I'll give the prosecutor 30 days. He said he needs to answer my court because the little guy had no idea what to put it He just called me up on Sunday. He had to do something on Monday for sentencing because he was going off for four years. And he flipped the court in a heartbeat. And the judge loved it. But we'll do that story later. And I got the paperwork that I gave him. Where does it It's off the court, is it? Yeah, no, it's just an administrative office that's up there. And then if you go to court, you get all the details. Your local counsel. All the details of that. So that's, the, that's the logic in order to get to Queen's Bench. So, so but the most important thing is that uh, a lot of people, well, some of the guys here will notice when we're talking about court, we're not talking about the building. They always want us to think it's the building and tie you down to their building, tie you down to their everything else. But it is so when you, when, you file, when you place it with the court clerk in what town? Salford. Salford. Yeah, what she does is she finds out where the defendant is located. And that's the courthouse that's closest to the defendant where he's going to answer. You make it easy on the defendant, you don't make it easy on the plaintiff or the claimant. You go to the defendant, where he is. Can you have motion to go to that defendant? The defendant can. The defendant says it's out of it, it's, it's, it's too much of a hardship. But if it's like, say, Nike or something like that, and they have a what or a set of operations all over the UK, yeah, then you can bring it down to you. You don't have to go to where the Nike headquarters in Manchester or London or something like that. You could actually have them. If they do business in your county, or what, you could have the court convened in your county. <coughs> if they hold business, if they have business action, you know, transactions in your county, yeah, then you could have it in your county. If they conduct business there, they could appear there. Cool. I think uh, if anybody has some questions, write them down, have a little break. Uh, we'll come for a break and uh, anybody with the order, if you can hold those up, we'll just collect those for a minute. They're the oh, only ones we've got at the minute, so the rest are in print. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and anybody who has any dying questions. Let's say thanks very much for the first time. It's inherent with you. God 
gives you this. And when you see it, you'll know it. And you just gotta usually just gotta relax. And just <laughs> and it'll count to you. The harder you push, the harder it pushes back. So just 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 it make a little work. And that's what I say to folks, if you folks have to understand what the, the, the folks of the legal system are doing. Because you always see this, they're into this Illuminati stuff. They're all into this pyramid stuff. And you always see the handicap is always missing because nobody can define the Creator. Nobody can define God for you. I can't define God. And your guess is as good as mine. Maybe we'll find out someday. Maybe not. But yeah, flip through those. I think there's like two or three here. Another Supreme Being. Okay, you've got to understand Supreme Being. Go back to Creator. There you go. Let's go to a Creator. Okay, the Creator. This is what these folks understand. Is that these folks understand that there's a higher level. And if you look, and this is what was a lot of fun, some United States Deputy uh, Prosecuting uh, Attorney, uh, Sandy, Sandy Callahan, yes, Sandy, he's a big man, don't call him Sandy, but he's a cupcake, he's a big man. He said to me, when my child first got taken back in 2001, 2002, when we went to the federal government to help, find out why the state of Alabama will give us just one piece of paper, why aren't children the child being held? They said, there's nothing I can do for you. I said, what? You're the United States government. You're the almighty. You're everything. He said, no. Uh, you can do this on my own. He said, once you learn how to be a man, it'll all come to you. And my whole family was there. We all came down from New York, Florida, Virginia. And I was like insulted. I was like, I'm the oldest son. I've been taking care of this farm and taking care of these people since I was 15, 16 years old. What are you talking about? I'm not a man. He said, if you were a man, you'd know how to get in and out of blood. He said, you don't need our help. you got everything you've got in you already. So I was so mad at him, the guy. But thank God he was a big guy too, man. Because it would have been fun to scrap with this guy. Because he really insulted me from my family. And I was a big insult. I'm not going to call me that. I'm not a man. So, and when it finally dawned on me, after years in a whole library, I looked in every single one of those damn books, and you will not believe what's the definition of man in that law dictionary. Does anybody know? There is no definition of man. You look in every single law dictionary, and the best one I could find was that an adult male. What, cricket, grasshopper, flea, adult male bird, adult male wasp, and adult male white. You can't define the creator. Can't get done. You want to believe your creator is this, you will be this, I don't believe that. So that's the same thing that's going on with the courts. We don't know what the creator is, so this is when they always see that missing end cap thing. They all seem I, the little letter I. The letter I is beyond powerful. Every single one of my effing documents you see starts out with I. Lowercase I. And if you go to my website, it's called uh, boardmind.org. You will see, I explain, capitalist medius, maximus, minimus, and what a capital means, and how it diminishes the capacity of the man. Your status is standing, you know, on planet Earth. So it's very simple. What I say to folks, when you go in as I, a man, because we are the reflection of God, we are the proof that God does exist, or creator. Let's go, intelligent design, okay? These people who says lightning bolts, mud puddles, okay, great, wonderful. Is that your belief? God bless you. But at least understand how your, what you folks would say, your legalese enemies believe. That's all I'm showing you. Yeah, they believe. They understand when I, a man, appear, a judge is under me. And you folks in England know this really well. Queens up here, kings up here, you know, Lord Dukes are over there. I know the, 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 the candles sticking me to the cobbler, he's over there. Here at the bottom. Yeah, the Lord knows. <laughs> so anyway, when you appear as a man, the judge knows he has no authority, no jurisdiction. No jurisdiction, let me say, except for people. What's the definition of jurisdiction? Control. That's all it means. Control. That's all it means. The judge knows he has no jurisdiction over a man. He knows a man is above him. Okay? People who listen to my show know I'm going with this story. Everybody's heard of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, correct? You guys think it's a monster, right? No. My dad was a high court judge at the time in England. He explained to her that's how corporations in England function within society, how they're charted, how they create, how they operate. 
All it is is when man takes something from nature, and he plays God, and he thinks that he's going to create this wonderful gift and benefit the man, to serve man for all time, this wonderful creation, and he sets it out to the public, even though in you know, his best intent and goodwill and charity for all men, that he created everlasting life, whatever, somehow something sometimes goes wrong. And that man is still going to be held liable for his creations and his acts. So even though he sets his corporation, his product, whatever he creates and sets it forth within the community, society, he's still going to be held liable if it turns out to cause harm, loss, injury to man. So that's what that whole story is about. So now if you want to just think it's a hollow possible, well, yeah, God bless you. You know, still think that, but find out who Sherry was, Mary Shelley's dad was, and you know, you see why she came up with this story in a way that dad explained to him. So, so when you appear in court, in person, the person is a man, but has a duty to a society, and you appear to defend as a prosecutor, the judge has authority over you. But the judge, when you only appear as a man, judge knows he has no authority over man. Because in the next word I use that's powerful, beyond powerful, is that you require him. And this is what I always do to everybody whenever I put any paperwork in, and they say, I am a require. Only a man can make a requirement. Only a man can state what he requires. Because require means by authority and 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 right. Only a man has rights because rights are your property. They're innate. They're part of your, your heartbeat, your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations, your rights. They're your property. Your intellectual property. They're your right. By right. It's your property. So, a government is given a charter or, a, or is bound by a constitution. And what they have is, they don't have rights, but they have duties, obligations to perform in the benefit of man. Man does not answer to the government. And thank God, it's funny. People say, well, what do you think about Barack Obama? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Ask me what I thought of Claire. Ask me what do you think about Barack Obama. I said, I think he's a lovely man. I said, I think he's got beautiful kids, a beautiful wife. I bet if he's my next door neighbor and his dog ran across my yard, he'd pick up the poop. If I said, hey, go lay a poop. I'm sure he's a lovely man. And that's the only way I look at him. If he's the president of Coca-Cola, the president of Cheetos, the president of the United States, the president of Mexico, I don't care what he does for living. He's a wonderful man. Like I say to folks, my uncle is the, he's the vice president of Visa. So when the president dies, my uncle will be in control of Visa, which is probably the biggest credit card company in the world. So I know these people. My uncle was just a regular Joe Schmo like me. He volunteered to go to Vietnam. I got pictures of him on a tank crew with heads on wheels, smoking a cigarette, tough guy. He came home from Vietnam, GI Bill. He, uh, him and his wife started out as lowly clerks of his bank tellers. They, put, they built their own houses with their war buddies on Long Island in New York when they had time on the weekends. They were years to build their homes, and now he's going to run these. So these aren't evil, Illuminati, crazy, you know, man dog, uh, you know, Jesuit priest that is disguised as the president of Visa. They're just normal blokes, man. Tell, trust me. He went met my uncle. He was in Delaware, and uh, you'd love him. He's, he's the funniest guy in the world. Next to that, well, I got to him. But still, Claire said to me, Barack Obama, and I said, I, I don't have the quote here in front of me, but at 8.18 p.m. on October, I think the 17th, that the United States government opened up back for business, he said, the greatest gift our founders gave us was the right to self-govern. That was it in a nutshell. That's the first time I ever heard a president of the United States, the United States, back up my beliefs and I said, wow, I'm done. And thank God this guy said it, because we are self-governing. We are our own governments. So when all you people are putting in paperwork and terrorizing these governments, what terrorist means is to interfere with the proper function of a government. So when they're doing it to me, I am self-governing. I am my own government. So when they try to terrorize me, are they trying to interfere with my proper function of my government? Yes, they are. I'm going to make a claim that they're going to come down. Yeah, don't make me write a law dictionary. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> so, that's the concept of the creator. So, like I said, even if you don't understand, don't want to believe, because I was kind of disappointed that England didn't have this great, you know, Church of England, blah, 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 blah. Not, when I say, oh, we had a funny story, we had a Liverpool, some speakers, we got to get the video. Some speakers started saying, oh, I'm making fun of people who believe in God. He started rapping out, oh, God, people are so funny. I said, 
Paul said, this is blasphemy, man. I got like this. You know, look at Paul. Like, I got to do something. I got to strike me down. So I said, this is blasphemy. So Paul said, like, oh, don't worry about it. This is the way they are. That, that's how you kill the people. I said, Bobby. So then the lady looked behind and said, like, oh, stop. All of a sudden, the microphone went, <laughs> the light started blinking. The guy's like, the lady yelled, blasphemy, man. And everybody said, uh, the guy said, everybody started laughing. They said, I think we're going to get off the God topic for a while. Because, like I said, I'm not here for my good luck and charm. To me, I'm here because something compelled me to do this. And I'm standing in here in England, and there's no doubt about it. I didn't make it out of 14 in a years old in school. How did I get to write a dictionary unless something pushed me to do this? Because I just want to be back on my farm. I got a beautiful farm. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to go back home. So, like I said, you've got to understand at least your anthem, what you guys would call your enemies, they understand what I believe. They, they understand this. You can say, oh, the church was priest, good, lovely. You know what? They believe that there's a hierarchy here. And they have some sort of like, duty bound to upstand, to uh, abide by their own rules. God bless them. God bless Judge Gregory. He seems like he did. I'm going to write him a thank you note. So that was lovely. That was a wonderful performance. I saw it in open court. He banished that barrister with the law, the common law in France. He would have been laughed at. But like I said, it was funny, the little guy, Brian Bonner, the little Irish guy, he's on my radio show this weekend. He was, he was on the beginning part of the show. And um, he um, had a problem. He said, uh, child support. So the first day that got to Indiana, he wanted to discuss child support. So he's like, well, uh, my friend just came out of jail for four years in America. They're very strict with child support. So he paid, his friend didn't pay child support for four years. So he just came out of jail. For four years. So he had to pay for four and a half years, and this guy's 55 years old. He's like, I can't do four and a half years. I said, Well, then pay the debt. He says, What? He says, He drives like a little moped, he's got half his teeth missing, he's a little Irish guy, can't have no money. I said, Yes, you do. You're worth value. Believe you got something that you can present that's worth great value. And he says, uh, No, I don't. He says, What should I do? I said, I made it simple. Pay your debt, you dead, you dead. And he's like, What? Pay your debt. And so it's funny, I did that on Monday. I said, look, guys, it's 10 o'clock, man. I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want to wrap it up. I'll come back and do this the next couple of days if you want me to, but I'm done. So the little guy didn't come back to the next two, three shows. It's funny, the next three shows. So I hear him on Sunday night. He calls me up. And he says, I'm going to be sentenced tomorrow. What should I do? I said, hey, you were the Irish guy, man, in the front seat, in front of all the other I said, yeah. I said, I go, you did beat that? Yeah. Why didn't you come back? He said, well, I was trying to walk around with a tens of thousands of dollars. I said, what are you looking for? Like the share market, the lucky pot of gold? Are you going to find tens of thousands? No, no, you got something of value. Trust me. He said, well, what should I do? And I said, yeah, I'll tell you what you should do. So I said, I thought it took a couple hours to do this. But uh, he said it took me about 20 minutes. So I wrote, I am man, or I am mom, wish to settle the matter on the private side. That sounds nice. If you always want to settle the matter of controversy that you have with I am on the private side, that's <laughs> and you folks, they said in the hierarchy here, loves the King James Version of the Bible in your other country. So, but at this time, I do not have access to more than $30 per month. Is there anything else? I said, how much you got? A dollar a day? He said, yes, good, I'm going to settle with that. Is there anything else of value in which you accept this payment to debt, in which you claim is true? And you believe, because only man has a concept to believe, I owe you. And you declare as now post due. I require of you, which is plural, you is plural, we use always plural, it's not singular. I require of you, the person and the man, a prompt answer. As I believe, and I believe, you wish, and you wish, to move your contentious claim against I and my person before an open court. And I claim this to be true, and I will verify it and collect all the hearings about to be true. So, it was fine. He calls me up on Monday afternoon. If this is, you can listen to it on the show, the two guys who went in there witnessed this. He said, Brian was the first one into the court. At 8.30 in the morning, boom, boom, they passed up to three copies, court clerk, he gave it to the <coughs> judge, he gave one to the prosecutor. And they went outside the lobby. He said, they were the first ones to go. I was like, oh my God. He said, we always like the last ones to go, because we have no lawyers, they save us for last. He says he walks into the courtroom, the judge is looking at the little notice. And the judge says, Oh my, he said, This little Brian Bond has got a little voice like this, but he's like this tall, right half, you know. 
he draws me to He said, oh, the judge said, the judge says, he's like, here, the judge looking at the nose says, oh, this guy's a play. Oh, he knows the worst. This is good. This is good. This guy, oh, he, oh this is a play. Oh, strike one. Oh, strike two. Strike three. Oh, oh, my, this is going to be good. I'm going to fall. Man, I haven't seen something like this in 20 years. This is going to be fun. So it was funny, he said the prosecutor, there's two prosecutors, there's a young guy and an old prosecutor, and the younger prosecutor leaned over the old one and says, do you have to answer these three questions? And the older guy said, we'll soon find out. So it was funny, Brian said to me on that show, he says, Carl, he says, in June, I did this from a In June, he tried to use the free man nonsense. He said what was going on, since he was a little guy, they wouldn't pull a stunt like that on me. But since he was a little Irishman, he said the prosecutor kept doing this behind the guy's back. He kept doing this. They can believe he's putting a crown on him. He's the sovereign. He's the sovereign. So the guy kept looking around, but he's like, what's the prosecutor? What's he doing? And the judge said, don't worry about it, your highness. Look over here, your majesty. I got some paperwork for you to sign. So they were mocking him with this free man sovereign nonsense, because I was one sovereign to say. Okay, let me do sovereign now, because I'm tired of sovereign nonsense. Sovereign means that you're not bound by any rules. You're not bound by any laws. That's a sovereign. Okay. That God or whatever is a sovereign because I'm bound by the law of God. So am I sovereign? No. Am I bound by the law? You better believe it. I'll be I don't want to be kneeling. You know, I'll be kneeling and dying and getting all the gold or something. I want to be here. If I could do whatever I wanted to do and no law bound me, that would make me a sovereign. But you are bound by the law. Believe me. You've got law of gravity, law of physics, law of nature. There's all kinds of laws that bind you. So don't even think that you're sovereign. That's a total joke. Good. You have got some free men people. That said, oh yeah, no more sovereign, not paperwork. Good. No more. That's it. So what happened was, the month before, he was ridiculed. He was mocked, putting all stuff in. And the older prosecutor said, the old prosecutor will soon, the younger prosecutor will soon find out. So it's funny, the young, older prosecutor stood up in court and says, uh, Judge, we're going to the state of Indiana is going to require a legal court um, to answer this very important document that Mr. Bond just presented to us. It's going to take us 30 days to answer this. Answer what? You, you claim that I owe a debt? You believe that I owe it to you? Or you declare it's not most debt? How hard is this to answer? Is there a debt? Listen, that believe me, if I was suing Bali for a debt, you better believe I'd say it's true. You better believe I, you owe me. And you better believe I declare it's not most debt. Hey, up. I have no problem saying that on the witness stand in two seconds. So the judge said, well, I might grant you legal pleasure. Mr. Bond, Mr. Bond, my body, but say you. And he says, well, he says, uh, he says, the prosecutor wants 30 days. I guess I'll give him 30 days. He said, are you sure? He says, yeah, I guess I could. He said, because you know, uh, it's your turn to prosecute the prosecutor. Would you like to put the prosecutor in the stand? Would you like to him to answer what you require of him to answer? You can do it. It's your turn to prosecute. So it went from an admin court to a common law court like that. The judge flipped it. Just that, like that. And Brian's like, nah, I'll give the guy 30 days, you know, because if he wants 30 days, I guess I'll just give him 30 days. So Brian Bonner can just slam this deal, I mean, I would pay to see the state of Indiana appear, because that was a claim that I would love the state of Indiana appear to make that claim. And <laughs> so anyway, it was true. So it was great that it was called a trial by ambush. You're not really supposed to nail a prosecutor like that on a, you know, on a day of the trial. It was pretty slick, but I had no choice. I try to give the other side a fair warning that I'm going to do this to them. And they usually just drop it, and they hop the tape like they do about it. It will just disappear. But you can do a trial by ambush, but it's, yeah, it's, to me, it's not cricket. I might give them a final chance. I've never seen cricket, man. I've never seen cricket. Yeah, I've never seen cricket. But um, what was funny is how, the, how that ended was Brian and his ex wife. Oh, of course, he was paying child support, but he was paying his wife directly. Like he put a roof on a house, like $6,000. and he, he was covering child support and stuff like that, but he didn't want to give the money to the state of Indiana, which was taking like 10, 15, 20 percent before they turned a little woman and a kid. So he was, he was a good dad. And so him and the ex-wife walked out of the court, and it was so funny. He said he walked past the ball. He said he walked down the aisle. He got to the door, and the younger prosecutor said, Brian, Mr. Bono, wait. He says, I can't listen to this guy's support. I'm so busted. I don't know what you wrote. I don't know how to perform in court. I have no idea what, oh my God, they're going to say, wait, before you go, where's the money? <laughs> so he said, he said, the, the younger prosecutor ran past him and his wife and opened the door for them and said, have a nice day, sir. So no more of this crown bulge 
but the point is you make a follow they realize there's a man that just walked through this court, and you might not ever see this ever again. So they witnessed like a miracle, like the king, the queen, the man appeared. Oh my God, he had one of them. And like I said, little tiny Irish guy, half his teeth missing, he pulled it off. So there's no way you guys could possibly mess this up except that you guys speak. Because the only way you can do it is by knowing these little simple questions that you put before the court. It's, it's that simple. There's no way in the world you guys could possibly... I, I wrote this one up. Yeah, I'm looking at how that was. Come on, are you kidding me? He said, that's what I wrote for a couple of hours. He said, no, man. So we called you at 4 and 5 o'clock we were printing. I said, oh, okay, it just seems like this. Because I don't even watch it. It just seems like it could be a couple of hours. He said, no. He was done, no time. And then somebody else asked me when I was uh, back there. He said something about a Mark Stevens guy. I think it was you. Okay, that's what really got me into, into the internet radio scene. Because on my phone, it's pretty cool. I play American standard pop music. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's like, you know, the old Frank Sinatra being one. I play on the farm. It keeps the cattle calm. It keeps everybody relaxed. So the twig snaps. Everybody stays calm with this thing to the American pop standards. It's the most sound ridiculous anybody who comes up in that valley. It's like, who played this? This is a comic show. <laughs> but anyway, we got the internet radio show. So it's AMF and doesn't make it over the mountain. We don't get stations in the valley. So we get internet. Yay. So we get the satellite link up. So I heard the Mark Stevens show. So I was just doodling around out in the farm, and all of a sudden uh, I hear the doctor, Mike something. He's a nice little general practitioner. He has two kids. He has like a nice car, a nice practice, and he owed IRS taxes. So he believed he owed taxes. So what happened was Mark Stevens said to the man, do this, do X, Y, and Z, we go to federal tax court. And I was outside, I don't know if I was working on a tractor, I mean, a truck, something. I said, oh my God, let me get in there, let me get find this phone number. Da, da, da. I called the station, da, 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 da. I said, get on the show, this doctor's going to go to jail, this guy's insane, da, da, da. He, you know, he's not the defendant, he's the petitioner, he, he's going to go to jail. So I got on the show and I said to Mark Stevens, I said, uh, Mark, Doc, yeah, wait, it, this is a, they patched me right in this, this guy says, emergency, this doc's going to go to jail. I said, Mark, when you go to the United States Federal Tax Court, are you the plaintiff? Are you the petitioner? Are you the defendant? He says, duh, you're the defendant. I said, Doc, one time in here is IRS agent. Make an agreement to pay the debt, thirty dollars one dollar debt. Believe it, get to your nearest tax auditor. She's a lovely lady, like my mom. She'll work out a payment plan with you until you understand what you believe and don't believe. Get your butt to a local IRS agent and make a deal because you're going to jail. And now he's been in jail for all the year now. He says, no, no, I trust Mark. I said, dude, you are the petitioner. The IRS is the defendant. The defendant doesn't have to say a word in the common law land. You have to prove that you don't owe. And who are you going to prove that to? A jury trial by jury? They all believe they owe. How are you going to convince them? A petitioner is somebody who makes a supplication to a deity and they beg for mercy. So when you see all these things, oh, a petition to court for relief. Yeah, you're praying to your creator. When you file a petition, you're making a supplication or a prayer to your deity or a creator for relief or for mercy. So all these silly petitions you see, you are giving them jurisdiction. You're saying, you're down here some freaking way. Because you're asking your creator. So read what the word petition means. So it's a very powerful word. You gotta be very careful when you petition because you only petition the Lord with prayer. You don't petition anything else other than God. And God doesn't have to answer you. He doesn't have to grant your petition. He doesn't have to. That's why they can come back and they can say, deny like that. And probably nobody in this room knows what the word deny means. Deny means not true. So when you say when a judge says, deny, you say, are you saying what I'm saying is not true? Take the stand. Do you have any first-hand knowledge? Are you third-party impartial witness to anything that transpired between me and the other party? How can you possibly deny it? How do you have any inside information? Were you there? How could you say anything that I said just now was not true? Because that's what deny means. Like, put it in that context and say that your mom denies you a child an ice cream cone. But she said that ice cream cone is not true. That makes no sense. See, so they twist the words. And like I say, what's funny all the time, I keep, if I was a judge, and I get asked to be a hearing officer time. My two friends are judges. It's funny. I can get rid of every single case in two seconds. I just say to you, hey, 
and you claim that you suffer by the acts of that person on that side, and you claim that you're suffering because of the acts of the government, every single person in this room would say yes. Then what does suffering mean? You had the ability to do something about it, but you laid back and you consented to it. When you had the ability to fight, you chose not to. So, did you have the ability to fight back? Yes. Did you choose not to? Yes. Because when you suffer from like a cold, you, you, you surrender to it. You lay down in bed and you're suffering because you're trying to shake it out, you're trying to wipe out a sweat, you're trying to realize, stop moving. If I move anymore and I have this high fever, I'm going to die. So now, right now you're suffering. And you know what to do, lay down and don't fight. I can get rid of every single phone. Every, every phone. I can get rid of every case in a heartbeat. By just asking them, did you are you suffering by the acts of the government? Yes. Next case. It's over. You said you had the ability at one time to fight, and you chose not to. Okay, well, let's go on. It does suffer does not mean what you guys believe it means. So like I said, I, I just went to the dictionary and I just went over and over like, here you flip to the word you real quick. Well, I don't really want to do that, man. That takes way too long. But the word you is plural. Oh, let's do actions for a second. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, love this one. Okay. <laughs> like I said to people all the time, I can't understand what you wrote. I can't hear what you're saying by your actions. Okay. Everybody runs around. I love you guys. Man, you guys are too cute. You guys are funny. You guys all have these nice big seals and stamps and registered and certified, all this kind of silly nonsense. You got all this paper with all these silly stamps and all these silly steals. Oh, look, we put a crown on the key and let's bring a line and maybe a dragon. This looks real bad. I mean, this is really going to carry the day. You know, it's really cute how you guys do this. But this is the paperwork. This is too big. Okay? And a common law land. France? Oh, yeah, that'll carry the day. Over here in common law land? It won't carry the day. Every piece of paper, every piece of document has to be supported by the voice of man, the Levoche. Everything has to be uttered, produced, to create the record, you know, support. You take your nice stamp seals, da 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 and you file it. File it with the court clerk. You put it in, you take your nice little suit, nice little suit, you pack it in a case, and you deliver the case with the suit to the court clerk. The court clerk then takes your suit, and she's, you're supposed to try your suit on in open court. You're supposed to open up the case, take on your suit with all the accoutrements, the attachments, all the exhibits, and present this to the jury. And the jury's going to determine the merits of your suit. And it's just like an American Idol contest. Whoever can perform best on stage, believe me, I'm really good at performing in open court, I'm going to win. The other poor slob has no practice at this. No matter how good his suit is, if I can perform better than him, I'm going to win. It's, that, it's ridiculous how strong the jury's work. But that's just the way it is in the common law land. Oh, let me get rid of straw man once and for all. I'm tired of this straw man nonsense. You guys all think you know what straw man means, right? Every single person knows what straw man is in this room, right? Yeah, everybody's heard of it, right? You've heard the concept of straw man, right? Okay. If all the straw man is, if you understand English history, everybody's that one man asked me. He said that somebody's hitting with gamma rays and stuff like that. And uh, he said he wants to make a claim that the government's doing this stuff to him. He said, that's a lovely claim. You know, whatever you believe, God bless you. But the only problem in the common law land is you need a third party impartial witness to verify in open court, utter, with people object, that he witnessed them doing you harm, wrong, or committed an injury to your person. You have to have a third party impartial witness. If everybody remembers the O.J. Simpson case in the United States, uh, everybody knew that he chopped his wife's head off and that poor kid. But everybody knew the rules of common law. You need dead men tell no tales. So since uh, Nicole Simpson or that poor boy couldn't come up and hold and help his name, couldn't show up and appear in open court and verify by their word that he caused them harm, they had no case. So what everybody in the jury said was great, man. It was like this little old black lady in the jury. What a sweetheart, man. She said, after 30 days, every single person on the jury knew, we all knew, Marsha Clark, the prosecutor.
campaign attorney would never have a third party, partial witness, ever to verify an open court that anybody ever seen O.J. Simpson hurt the fly. So until somebody can come forth and verify the claim is true, the scale of justice stands balanced. We have to take it. And in O.J. Simpson's case, they had 10,000 million documents and evidence and blood samples and DNA and all this other stuff, all circumstantial. All circumstantial. I heard some poor black radio host in Atlanta going off and off about how Texas was being unjust to this black man who was uh, uh, found uh, guilty of murder, but his DNA sample came back that it wasn't. It, it could not have possibly been him. It, was, it must have been like a white, Asian, Oriental, Indian guy. It couldn't have been this guy. And I called the show and he was furious. I said, look, DNA is circumstantial. I said, I don't know how to explain to you guys. It's called a chain of custody. This same thing here. Does anybody have the sample that he had from 1977 in their possession 100% of the time until 2012? No. Could have the sample got corrupted? Yes. Could somebody switch the sample? Yes. How much access does everybody have to that sample? Who knows? It's been sitting there for 30 years. Anybody could not switch it. You paid the right guy. Magic could happen. So, circumstantial evidence, even though you guys say I was making fun of somebody before saying, I can't believe it is. Don't worry about that facts. Don't worry if they got a mountain like they had against O.J. Simpson. Don't worry about all that nonsense. Do they got the word of man in the common law land? No. It's up. You can talk around for a year and a half, two years, like Marshall Clark did. It's a total waste of time. I knew it was over the first four days. As soon as she gave the whole thing statement, I knew it was over. But it's done. I mean, the only reason why they let it go on is they want those four attorneys want to take O.J. Simpson every damn time he had. They all knew he was guilty, and they were going to back up the guy before the civil decision came. But like he did lose everything in a civil hearing, civil trial. They were going to get him before the, the Goldman family got him. So uh, it, was, it was pretty pretty wild. I mean, I, I love the park. It was funny. We walked, I was walking to the Stardust, a real cowboy uh, casino in Las Vegas, and everybody betting on it, and I knew he'd walk. And it was so funny. I was like, because ah, it's all cowboy guys, all these white guys from the in Texas. So I was like, Yes, yes. And everybody's like, what? I said, the American justice system prevails. I said, you still need a third, no matter how bad we all wish that he was found guilty. The American justice system prevails. You must have a third party impartial witness to verify under oath or, or affirmation that it's true that they've been witness to something. No matter how bad we want to see the guy go, he's got his, you know, he's sitting in jail now for some silly crime. But this is what I say to people. They need the words. And your actions speak louder than your words. So when you go to court against somebody, it's like, look, I you know the, the bad lawyer guy will say, look, I got this piece of paper. He signed this piece of paper. It's a contract. It clearly shows that not. He signed this mortgage. It's a foreclosure. This is a loan. This is a credit card. This is whatever. It's going to go on and on. Whatever this piece of paper is. Like. This is great. Love it. Do you have anybody who's going to come forth with first hand knowledge that that piece of paper is true? They turn to be like, I can't verify it. I have no idea. What happened with the chain of custody this thing? This thing was written in 1992. Does anybody have any proof of chain of custody? Does anybody else have access to that document? Well, no. But the only thing that always nails you people all the time is, did you make one payment? If you make one payment, your actions speak louder than your words. You can say, oh, that payment is bullshit. Ah, that, 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 that was fraud. Oh, they're not going to have anybody come forward. Ah, ah, ah. Nah, nobody's going to come forward. And test the first time. Did you pay a penny? That's that case. Your actions be glad when you work. So, but can you settle that? Please, I believe. Some man, uh, Joseph, asked me to write something to him because they wanted 12,000 some pounds for something. And I said to him, honestly, how much do you have? He says, 250 pounds. Love you. So we wrote a letter for him and they accepted it. So he would get evicted or foreclosure on the debt. And all the other side wanted. Proof of some sort of wage slips you guys call them over here and utility bills and something else they want. He went bananas. He says, there's no true money. There's no this. This is all fraud. Uh, uh, uh. I said, dude, you don't think I'll take a house for 250 pounds a month? Are you out of your money? They're willing to give you the house for 250. They give it to you for 25. It's 25 pounds. He asked me like 25. They can't say no. They have to accept every offer. Then it they don't have a choice. Because if he doesn't know the Bible. <laughs> Does anybody know that Bible part? 
when somebody tries to pay, make a payment on a debt, if you refuse to accept payment on a debt, there is no longer outstanding debt between the parties. Does anybody know that? By the way, I hope you guys do. Because they're trying to bash that guys out of your brains in school. There's a lot of simple things that those people in those black robes, old Jesuits, believe in. Why don't you go read their rule book? It's, it's kind of fun to read the Old Testament, the New Testament, the boring, so ugly, lovely stuff. But the Old stuff has got a lot of action, a lot of law, Deuteronomy, all you get it. A lot of good stuff you find. And understand how you would use what your enemies are controlling you. So, like I said, is there anyone else who wants to say, oh, you? Oh, yeah, we can do an eye real quick. Let's do an eye real quick. That's, that's, that's fine. That's an eye real quick. Amen. Call that. By God. I. By nature, I'm a man. How I'm defined is called last. I don't know, but in my society. Yep. Oh, yeah, you want to do capital K? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do this nonsense about what K is. Okay? Like I said, if you go to my website, broadmind.org, and that's a play on word, too. The guys probably get the joke. Broadmind.org. Um, Anybody have anything on board mind that You're from New York. We know what a board is. Okay, board mind that Everything's on board mind here. I'm board mind. Don't use lowercase because that means you're some sort of free floating sovereign. This means that I understand that I have certain duties and responsibilities to a family. I'm very proud of it. You remember the Lentz family. You Google Lentz. We made all the steam locomotive barrels back in the 1800s in Germany. I, was very, I love being the last. I'm very proud of that. Everybody should be proud of their heritage and their family. That's why it's common kind of law. You know the Jamaican crowd? God bless you. Work within your community because you're going to have to depend on each other because nobody can come save you. So, when you start changing this to uppercase and lowercase, if you change the word less, then I become a member of somebody else's society and I lose my standing within my family. Now, if I wrote the word citizen up here, what do you folks think the word citizen means? I mean, somebody went to somebody read the book sometimes. Citizenship. Which signs of the societal. Does it mean social laws? Citizen. In Latin, civis. What's civis? A member of a family. How many families can I belong to? The Gambino crime family? My sister married into? No, I'm a American the Lentz family. So, I hold allegiance and alliance. I, I, all my duties and obligations is to my citizen of the family of Lentz. <coughs> not the United States Corporation, and not American. No. Look, my first duty is to Lentz. Then it's to God, then it's to country. To the other people. Country means other people. That's my duty, though. I, I, I lay my life down for that. Now, then God, hey, God, you don't need me. And our country, hey, you know what? No, sorry, folks. But I'm not doing what I do for the lenses. So that's what all this means. So I, always with the head. You put an uppercase I, what does an uppercase I mean? What does all uppercase? Everybody knows what uppercase means here, right? A full dimension of capacity and standing within a society. A slave, right? Everybody knows it's a dead entity, right? Corporations, right? You guys all know that, right? We're on the same page. Great. Uppercase I. Looks like somebody's been drawn in court and decapitated. There's the capitalization law. What do you think they call it? The capitalization and decapitated. Uppercase I. A man with no hair. <laughs> Capitalist. 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 Maximus. The biggest capacity in which you lose stand. <coughs> you are dead. You are a man. He lost his head. You're dead. So I. A man called Lens believe? That's ridiculous. A dead man believes? I mean, dead man believes. That's, that's insane. A dead man is dead. Man. So this drives them crazy. When I do that with the judges, they say, oh, that's good, that's good. He's a player. Oh, he knows the capitalist, minimus, maximus, medius. That's right. I know that. Drives them nuts. But don't put Latin in this. Oh, don't do that. Don't use Latin. Oh, I see this nonsense because they can put every single word in Latin. You talk in Latin, they'll speak to you in Latin. Make it feel like the whole damn document. Latin. Don't put Latin. Don't use foreign words. In, unless you're competent in it, don't do it. Uh, what's this your name, Nance? Go straight. Oh, straight. Oh, Lane. Oh, boy, this is great. This is beautiful. Oh, I love this. I love this when it comes to folklore. This morning, you know, the very stuff. 
Really, it's just as fun. Everybody knows, does everybody know this? Because in the United States, everybody knows this. Banks can't own land. Banks can't own land. Banks. Banks. B-A-N-K-S. Banks. Corporations can't own land. Did you know that? The deed to the man. Okay? Okay, the queen, for God's sake, the queen, the king, owns all the land, right? The people and the queen are one. The king and the land are one. Where did you come from? Where did you come from? You come from some space alien, spaceship? Where did you come from? Your mom and dad ate from the land. Where are you going to go when you die? Back to land. Why can't the banks own land? Banks can't own a man. The land and the king are one. Land. Why don't you go with the land? It's the inhabitants of, a, of the surface on planet Earth. It's the inhabitants that live in a certain section of planet Earth. Land is man. Okay, real estate is a legal use kind of body. That's every edifice structure. One micron above land. They can own. They can control. That's fine. They can make a claim. But they cannot make a claim of land. Kind of make sense? Okay. So, but I don't know how long this joke that I do to people when it goes to foreclosure. They say, hey, you know what, Mr. Uh, real Estate Guy? You claim that that's your house, that's your real estate, correct? Yeah. Here's your house. Get it the F off my land. <laughs> I'm going to charge you $50,000 a day for that edifice that you own. I'm not disputing it. It's all yours. Now get your effing house off my land. Whose land is that a part time? Mine. You better get rid of it now. Because you are the full owner of it. You accept full ownership? Or do you want to give it back to me? You just let it alone. How do you want to play this game with me? See what they say? Try that sometimes at last. Instead of going through all these, oh, Sister K Trust Act. Oh, I don't know what's going on. What does Sister K Trust Act? Let's do that real quick. We got it. You want to do Sister K Trust Act? The 1666. Does anyone want to do Sister K Trust Act? Yeah, you shake his head. You've heard of that, right? Good. You heard of Sister K Trust Act. Great. Let's do Sister K Trust Act real quick. What happened in 1666 in Mary Old England? Well, and fire and play. Fire and play. Okay. What happened? Oh, they blamed it on the Christian, they blamed it on the Catholics, but we're not calling that conspiracy ground. Let's just do Sussex Gate Trust Act, okay? <laughs> I got a friend of Catholics too, you know. So anyway, <laughs> the Sussex Gate Trust Act in 1666. When the play broke out and the fire broke out, all the royalty left the palaces. There was massive looting in the streets. The king realized if he killed everybody for looting, it was going to clean up this mess. It was everybody's looting, every stealing. So I said, hey, you know what? We'll distribute the, the assets of the, the Great London Fire. And, uh, but you know what? Everybody who finds this stuff, let's just store it in a warehouse for seven years. This has the K Trust, the benefit. Let's just create a trust, and we're going to store it in a warehouse for seven years. If nobody comes back and claims it for seven years, you can make a claim for it that you found it. Finders, keepers, losers, weakers. Nobody's made a claim. Make the claim. Just deposit it in a warehouse. But if the own rifle owner comes around, we got to give it back. If they ran off to Normandy or France to escape the fire and the plague and they're scared to come back, we'll give them seven years. And then make a claim. And the rest will be kept by the crown. That's simple. There's no, there's no magic in the Sister Kate Trust Act of 1666. When I heard people on the radio, I said, what? What? I actually went back and I found a book from like 1676. And I actually read the damn act. I was like, there's nothing to do with birth certificates. You know, there's no such thing as birth certificates like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln had birth certificates. They had no marriage licenses. What did they record? All the births. What did they record? All the deaths. What did they record? Everything. Now, what did you guys use as passports to go from one country to another country 11 or 20 years ago? The family Bible. You recorded it all on, in the cover of the family Bible. That's Susie, that's Bobby, that's Billy. Would I write God? Would I write something in the Bible? And, and mock God to strike me down? That was your passport. That's where everything was recorded in the family Bible. Okay? So, you want to flip to something else, Paul? We're kind of running down. Like, I think we can stay in all night. We're going to stay in all night. We're going to stay in all night. We're going Now, put too much pressure on your audience. Think of a question quick for Carl. No, let's talk about 
Is there anything else of value? People are being willing to offer anything else of value for fair and just compensation for debt. They have to accept it. Or the debt is no longer due. In which you accept this paper to the debt, in which you claim it's true. She said she went to court the next day, and she came back to the office, the donut shop. And she said, wow, the hospital attorney loves me now, and the judge loves me now. Because you're just one side of debt. You don't want no controversy in the public. You don't want to fight for nobody. You want to work with thy neighbor. You want to set off the debt with your brother. And you're done. No more controversy, no more fight. It's just like, wow, that was great. So like I said, it's great because Bobby, Bobby told me, he says that with how it works with my show, people call me up and... Uh, I was saying to you somebody else before as well, and uh, uh, the radio show's on every uh, Saturday night, uh, and basically people ring up, and it's usually near near the end stage, so it normally has to be quite a quick response. Uh, normally it'll be a couple of sentences and then they're sent off. And then uh, you're listening to what the problems are, and then you see you hear the sort of sentences. And then the following week, um, you always get a quick response. And how many people who have these issues do you get a quick response? You don't. Uh, <laughs> and basically, people ring back and they, they tell you whether it's worked or not. And I think that's brilliant. Um, there's lots and lots of successes on that, and that really speaks volumes. Um, there's not a lot of people that can say that, uh, following lots of stuff there. I've been on other training courses. I certainly I hold my hands up and I say, no, uh, I've got to be the first one to admit that. Um, but moving on a little bit, looking at the time, right? so whatever we are, we want to tell us what we're doing. Next. So, yeah, use my well, yeah, so what we, we uh, what I'm uh, forcing cards for you is to basically. Oh, you know what I got to see in England so far? You know what I got on my camera set back on the right? The most famous thing I've seen? The Rugby Cement Company. Really oh, famous. that's as far as it's taken me. <laughs> 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 and it's <laughs> three to three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. He's getting so a jurisdiction now. He's, he's getting every day of the time. He's to Burnley. He sort of went back last year to the football ground. Yeah, when? Yeah, for a meeting. Anyway, anyway, stick stick to the subject. So. Talking of orders, so we've got the order pad, so we're trying to oh. make it easy for the masses for, for this to come out. Did they see the invoice pads? So the invoice that when officers or any man gives you a command an invoice, you can demand fair and just compensation for the court of amendment. There's no, oh, there you go. Nobody can, no, nobody's anybody else's slave. And this is the whole thing that I'm trying to do here. I'm going to try to make it, to the cops are going to love me, I'm telling you. They're going to be so free of the stupid money game nonsense with their county commissioners trying to get revenue. They're going to be so grateful that they can go catch bad guys and leave little old ladies and jaywalkers alone. That they're going to be afraid that nobody on planet Earth, that's what I hope, like Gandhi was, was passive resistance, I'm passive compliance. They're going to say, oh my God, this guy, as big as he is, and he goes and steals, he's passive. This whole way of, of doing it is, it flips everything upside down, so it makes you think, oh, so the judge isn't evil, the police officer isn't evil, and the enforcement officer isn't evil, he's there to take, I'm there to take their orders, I'm there to make money for them. Yeah, we said the barristers are a little twisted, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they got their picture right They got their picture right But, but, but to to help. Help. How about the other ones as well? So what we're doing is, like, if you notice, it gives quite a few examples. So we're trying to do these little mini books. So depending on what the subject yeah, is. Yeah, so we I was working for years, and this book is huge. And I said, you know what? It's going to take six to nine weeks for me to get it done. And it's, it's this time of year for me to do it. It's winter time. But I said, hey, somebody came up with a great idea. So let's make little mini books for foreclosures, bankruptcies, debt, credit cards, and everything else. Let's create a little box for you guys so we can get something cheap. It's, it's the same subject as when you have to get swamped with it, so this, this should resolve a, a lot of these where we can just direct you and say, they're just a little book. Don't go over there and buy 50,000 in law books and stuff. But this will get, get you in and out. And what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to set up hubs in, um, in, in England. I just realized just basically one third of your island is where like 90% of these people live. So if you guys have like fruit juice places, you guys got to stay in touch with each other and not. But as I'm saying, we try to get like some sort of background where we can find people in these clubs to uh, support each other. And Bali's going to take over like Coventry area, uh, you know, for you folks in uh, Birmingham. H wants to do uh, Birmingham. You know, everybody's got their, uh, got a man in Essex and Jason. We got Dave and Lynn in uh, Plymouth. You know, Neil Heavy's a little too aggressive, but probably some late down in 
Yeah, he's gonna have a girlfriend. Yeah, we're gonna have like some lady, like Paul or somebody who would open it. Little Paul, cool. somebody. Who? Paul. Somebody called him. We don't want violence, man. We just want these people to love us and pay us. Who's who's dealing with the political section? Paul Keller. Yeah, we're trying to get the lady Paul. We we're trying to get Neil. She's from Leicester. They didn't have a job to do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what what we're trying to find somebody to live We like. We want. Do you want to be the guy for me? We want. We want the court. We want the court with Neil, and Neil has no clue how to move the court. He stayed outside, and me and Valerie. Okay. So if you don't know how to move a court, you certainly don't want the guy representing you. You got to know the whole. You got to know the theory. You got to have a belief. You got to have a core of what common law truly is. You gotta have uh, the concept of the words that you, your enemies respect and they use and they use against you to get your jurisdiction control over you. You gotta understand their vernacular because they just have to be in charge of this on our planet Earth. So we have to deal with them whether you like it or not. And then you gotta write the paperwork. And the paperwork is two sentences done. You see how simple this is? And then once you get the once you get the judgment, then you gotta execute the order and collect on it. That's what happened in Indiana the other day. This was a. I, didn't I tell you guys that, that the judge said that? He got up and ran when the guy said, Is that, you know, are you right? And he said, Come to the bench, go across the bench. He says, And he got up and said, You wish you had the water? Yes. And he came up. He said, I hope you got your checkbook, judge. And the judge ran out of the room. <laughs> and the U.S. Marshal said, That's the first time I've ever seen that in my life. The judge got up and ran. Because he understood. That he wishes that order. He didn't realize he misspoke. Wish is a crafty man. Only a man can create an order. True under the Yeah, true under man. Oh my god. Is that request the order? No, require. 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 Require means by authority and 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 right. No, a, a request or an order. No, you require an order. You require. You always make a requirement because you've got to understand these silly words that they use. Require means by authority and die. Uh, not and, and. It has to have a right when you make a requirement. So demand is not a requirement. Request is not a requirement. And all the time, you make a requirement. You require this to happen. But yeah, that's like I said, this is what we thought was pretty funny. These book things we thought were pretty cool. And uh, these little order forms, I think they're going to, because you guys all know everything about fee schedules. And I said, you guys don't have order forms, invoices to go with your fee schedules? Really? Huh, well I'm gonna create something here for you UK folks and pounds and your Queen's bench that I already got like in the United States and say, you guys don't have anything to go with the fee schedule. Oh no, I'm gonna show you how to support the fee schedule. You need an invoice. You need to have the cop say it in his voice. Somebody else will give you a quarter. And you want to go on cop it, you want to carry it out. I'll tell you now, when you see that people come towards you, you'll just see pounds on it. So uh, that's completely different from where we you know, know, feel threatened right and everybody opens up their pockets and go, oh, how may I take your order? <laughs> 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 that's what I'm trying to do. What's that? This is applied to traffic. It can apply to everyone. It can apply to a judge. Because he's going to have to show, he's going to have to show where you as a man did wrong. And the only place that you have to answer as a man is Queen's Bench. The person has to answer in these administrative courts, but not the man. Thank God we live in merry old England, or well, you guys do. We live in a common law land where man is supreme. But if you're in France, my stuff will not work. You'll be laughed out of the building. You take this over to Germany, Italy, France, you're going to be laughed out of the building. Is it just France? Germany's okay, Spain's okay. Any, any code where code is the dominant, where everybody knows that code prevails as the hierarchy of the law. Customs, beliefs, practice, common law, somewhere in the bottom, so I consider Q. They think this new one world order with all these static codes. If you do something wrong in Uganda or in Paraguay, in France, everything's the same. You just get the same crime, universally accepted. No matter where you go in a galaxy, they're going to try to make a one world order. It's insane. Well, it's a lovely thing in one breath, but then you know what? We're going to lose our customs. We're going to lose the Jamaicans' customs. We're going to lose the Aborigines' customs. We're going to lose I came to England, the first thing I saw was Kentucky Fried Chicken. And how disappointed I was to see McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. So there was only merry chips and uh, fish and chips everywhere. The cement works must have been a highlight. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Next week, uh, <laughs> next week what? Oh, we're going to be on the Brian Heffy ship. Oh, 
the UK Economy on Tuesday, but we'll come back to that. I just want a quick mention of the the uh, law dictionary. That's going to be you've got your rough uh, three thousand five hundred words. So uh, when we send them back to America, <laughs> you'll have a bit more time to finish that off. Yeah, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Like, book of, like this is like the Book of Doom. This is a plan on your Book of Doom because the Book of Doom, you guys think it's some sort of skeletons, apocalypse, and dragons, and unicorns, and all kinds of things. The Book of Doom is not about that. It's really called the Book of Doom. It's D-O-N-D. -E. But you guys pronounce it Doom because it's a play on words. Because in 1081, the conqueror, William, came over, and he just had the, the, the kingdom assessed tax about So he had five justices in each county. Do you know this? Great. Yes, it's a There's a Doom, Doomsday. Doomsday. You guys go, what it was, was the Doomsday book. Okay? This is Doomsday, but when the people saw the tax guy come knocking on the door, they said, uh-oh, it's Doomsday. Time to pay the guy in taxes. So they played play the word Dooms, Doomsday, Dooms book, to the Doomsday. Oh, it's Doomsday. So this is Book of Doom. It's the orders of man. So when a cop gives you something in voice, it's his order, by the order of man. So you're just taking orders from other men. You're not taking orders from the police. You're not taking orders from a cop or a judge. You're taking orders from a man. This will only work against a man, not a judge. If you try to use this against a judge, you put the word judge down there, you might as well just try to collect it from a bottle of water. It doesn't exist. Only man has the capacity to utter an order. This bottle can't. Judge can't. Magistrate can't. Does it kind of make sense? It might, it's nonsense, isn't it? It's a lot of fun. Not nonsense. It's yeah, it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun once you know the rules, once you know the game. Pete like Bowie, he's laughing his butt off now. He used to be so straight. Now you up. get the joke. Now he gets the joke. Get the and joke. that's what I'm trying to do. Just trying to say, hey, this is the joke. You don't think the legal society offered to buy me a house and put me and my family up and make me a lawyer like that? And I just said, oh, no, man. I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> Telling everybody the joke. You're like, oh. It's a crazy guy from England paid for my dick. Yeah, so that's like, oh, well, that's like, believe me, we, we got this couple, God will provide, God will provide, that's I don't need your money. So let me on your dictionary? If you want to, man. Like I said, I want to break it down, I think it's better to break it down, but like I said, my dictionary explains like the Book of Dome, but you guys don't need to know what the Book of Dome is, to, to move a foreclosure or bankruptcy or credit card debt or uh, to, to handle notices, you don't need that stuff to get your custody back. The Book of Dome is a fun thing, I mean, it's like, Three quarters of my page, but you guys don't need to know that. That's good, like we're sitting on a toilet and you know, it's going to kill some time if it's a hobby. So I figured, you know what? We just got to make mini books. There's like a mini book in here, okay? And it's very simple. There's like 50 pages, and you know, that way we can sell it really cheap and get it out really quick. No, that's not even a little book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little book. It's this way, 50 pages. So we figured we could sell it pretty cheap. And that way, you guys, like, we do want custody, we want taxes, we want foreclosures. And some that everybody has access to, but it's fine. When I, um, back in the 1990s, uh, I, worked as, I worked as Sony Intel Computers. I worked as tech support. And uh, this is my old car for tech support back in 1998 at the Convex Convention. I actually worked as tech support for Sony Intel Computers. So what was a lot of fun, though, is I would get on the phone when I had a farmer call up or had a uh, gay black hairdresser and call and call up for tech support. They always sent the guys to me because they couldn't just read the script and understand what Sony Dell said. This is how you technically support these people. I would always be able to get to understand the other person, like empathy. I could actually feel for the other person, like, okay, I know what you've experienced. I know how you're looking at your computer. So if a farmer say, okay, the USB port is like a PTO unit. He said, you want to put all kinds of different farm implications on that. This is what you're going to have to switch. You need to do it hot or you do it cold. Now, it's better to do it when it's not running, ain't it? So I'd explain to a farmer how to use a computer. So be, the, the supervisors would be listening. It's like, what is he? He's so off the script, it's not even funny. But the farmer, the hairdresser guy would say, thank you. He says, I've been trying to figure this stuff out for years, but you've told me how to get through it so quick. It was scary. He says, why don't you write a book? I said, ah, book. I said, did you ever see what Microsoft and Bill Gates created the book? That big. Or 60 bucks. I said, how big of a book can I create? This big. How much can I get? Five bucks, ten bucks. That's why Bill Gates is building that, I'll never be. <laughs> but is it worth it? Getting you happy and getting on your computer down the road? Yes. Does Microsoft want me to sell you that $60 book and tell you to figure out your own? You better believe it. They'll test it. Did I solve the answer in less than five minutes? 
And I'll tell Paul my name, how it works. So the eight track tape works, the cassette tape. You remember how that works? You remember how it's cool? You remember how this works? On and off, binary code, you understand how this works? He's like, well, no, I'll explain to you in about five minutes. You'll make everything you need to know about computer. So this is all I try to explain to people. Everything you need to know how to get the hell in and out of court. How to write a piece of paper. So that's what Bowie's trying to keep saying. How to get in and out of court. How to make a plan. How to write a piece of paper. Da 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 da. But just do it short and sweet. And that's what I said to Bowie. Who just mass market this thing? They're just going to flood the market. Do it cheap like Walmart. They just instead of going instead of going Bill Gates and doing sixty hundred bucks or everything, make it cheap. Flood them off. And so that way you little hub guys can get these things out to your friends quick. It's just, hey, you gotta read this, hey, you gotta read this, hey, you gotta read this. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> Make sense? Yeah. All right. So, you wanna add something real quick? Uh, it might be. I mean, this private non governmental ID, uh -huh. is what you made of it. Uh, not much, it was misspelled. A low case. The name is low case, and did your sovereign. Very form D. It is, yeah. Yeah. Don't you want to be a member of a family? Don't you want to believe you have a duty and obligation to somebody within the society other than yourself? You look real selfish when I call it. You judge you. Somebody who understands capitalism and this maximum media is you look like you're a sovereign. You think that you don't hold anybody, anything. You look like an iron brand. That she can do whatever the hell she wants because it's all about me. I mean, she has some good core beliefs, but then she just gets a strength. You've got to work by the phone. you got to. What do you got? What do you kill her as an island? You live by yourself? You want to eat cold nuts all day? Go ahead. Then write the name like that. Do you have a concept on the silent letter getter? Silent? Silent letter. Silent letter. Exactly. If God be the word, mm -hmm. where do you get a silent letter from? They use it as a get out of tools to change the word when they've lost it to a different meaning. Well, like I said, what I do, what, what, what they do, I believe everything they want to believe in. I believe in all their facts, all their evidence. I believe everything they want to believe. <clears throat> right. I couldn't care less what they believe. God bless them. I believe this. I believe the only way you could get me is that I've done wrong. You're going to have to testify in open court under all the affirmation in front of trial with my peers. So whatever you want to try to convolute something, whatever your beliefs are, to try to twist something, I, like I said to folks on my radio show, I just try to get you guys in and out of court so fast to get into the sunshine. I don't worry about conspiracy theories. I won't talk about chemtrails. I won't talk about any of that stuff. I have my beliefs. You guys have your beliefs. God bless you. But I just want to get people in and out of court as fast as I can, get back out in the sunshine with the kids, and be let alone from any government intrusion that they don't wish. If they don't believe there's a benefit, please just leave me alone. And we'll get along fine. You, you interfere with my rights, you're going to be in trouble. Because they don't violate your rights. Because, see, you got to be careful. If you violate means to actually stick something in something. Like you violate, like, say, uh, you know. You don't use, you got to be careful with the words. They interfere with your rights. Interfere. Interfere. Like I said, that's what I'm saying. i got to give you guys these dictionaries to get the simple words out there. So stop using the fringe. You don't use violate. They just interfere. But that's all it is. It's that you have the right to do as you wish and then interfere with your right to exercise it. They try to tell you you can't exercise your right hand. Tell me I can't exercise. Tell me yeah. I you can't interfere with that right. I'll do what I want. That's what I wish. We, we've really got to wrap it up because uh, otherwise the bar may get to it in my head in a minute. So I, I really want to say that. So just a thanks to Valley and Carl. <laughs> <laughs>